Now, Marnie, I'm not sure how to introduce this episode because I'm conflicted emotionally and I'm not talking about my own personal life. I'm talking about the football. It's back. I'm happy, but I'm kind of sad, but I'm kind of happy. Yeah, I don't really know how to feel. Definitely happy that the footy's back, that's for sure. Um, There's a lot to unpack from that game. It's about, what, two hours after the game ended. Mm. Um, We've let it marinate a little bit. Yeah, we've let it sunk in. We've fought a few times already off air. We have argued a little <laughs> That's bit. That's a bit uh, of a preview for what's to come. <laughs> oh boy, it's going to be a big episode. Yeah, this might be the one where we we, we fall out, Marty. Is it done? No, because you always come crawling back <laughs> every time we hug you. I think it's the other way. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's not. not. It's not at all. Um, Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Further North. The first review podcast, the first main podcast of season 2024 is back. That is exciting. That is exciting. Yes. We are happy to be here despite um, what we've just led on to believe. Mm. We are very happy to be here. No, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we're excited. So basically, we're just going to get straight into the game. The Sean Atley Club champ is back, which is very exciting. Um, and we've got your voice messages, which you've all kindly enough sent in. We've got a few to play. We did get a bunch. Um, so we've picked as many as we possibly could. If you didn't get played this time, we apologize. Keep sending them in and we'll get to you next week. Uh, we should remember names okay. And we'll be able to play different people every week hopefully yes definitely if thank you so much to those who did send in this week we really really appreciate it absolutely um under the microscope is back as well marnie someone i put under the microscope uh i think as far as i remember because i didn't write this down i remember i'm pretty sure it was ccj it was and was it paul curtis correct yes but fantastic. you went for ccj in the end i went for ccj in the end great. that's going to be a great talking point because that's something we argued about stay tuned for that guys <laughs> But anyway, um, let's get straight into uh, all of your reactions to uh, to the game. Once again, thank you for sending in all your voice messages. Furthernorthpod at gmail.com for the future. Um, let's get into this one right now. I wonder who this is. Uh, g'day, Josh. Um, love the podcast. Um, just wondering, um, why do, did Josh go to um, limp off the field when he obviously showed to us that he has three legs? Appreciate your response. <laughs> Well, that to me sounds like Admin 3 from North Melbourne, close to a flag. Mm, sounds very similar indeed. Not speculating, but I think it might be him. I think he's referring to Josh Goder's manhood there. Do you think that's what he's referring to about the third leg? Yeah. I'm, yeah. Is I, it too I, soon to make Josh Goder jokes? <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be. Yeah, poor Josh Goder. Poor Josh Goder. Josh Goder. RIP Josh Goder. We'll talk about that later. Mm. Um, look, I can't confirm or deny the size of Josh Goder's junk, but apparently Admin 3 can. So um, leave that up. <laughs> To speculation, and I think we're going to start some rumours about Admin 3 and Josh Goder's affair they're having. Anyway. I'm going to pretend none of that just happened. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> this is the content people come here for. Is it? Anyway, let's really get into the real stuff. Um, you'll like this one from uh, Conrad. For an outstanding effort, including a game high, nine tackles, 121 AFL fantasy points, five mm. marks and a goal, the Rising Star nomination for round one goes to... Helmet Cherry playing his first game for the Royal Blue and White. <laughs> the smile on your face, Marty. You're starting something with Helmet Cherry. I've started a movement. You have. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Imagine last year <laughs> telling me I'd be the king of the Helmet Cherry <laughs> fan club. Imagine. <laughs> and this shows that anything is possible. Anything is possible. Yeah, I thought he was good today. He was another point of um, debate. Pre, pre-record? Really. Well, yeah, but for, for different reasons. We both think he was good. Spoiler alert. But, uh, yeah. He was good. Um, look, does he get a rising star nomination like Conrad said in the voicemail? Though? Um, he's too old, isn't he? He is too old, Marty. But I think he was maybe that influential in the game. We give it to him anyway. Okay. I think we send I'm a letter. I'm not against it. I think we send a letter to the AFL. Okay. Okay. We'll add that up for our to-do list this week. Yeah, it's going to be a big week. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, uh, Richie White with this one. Go Kangas, Richie White here. Um, our backs need to play more man on man. Got a photo with Griffin Logue and, yeah, be a good season ahead. Go Kangas. Richie's stoked there. I think Richie went to the game. He sent me a couple of photos uh, lucky, of him as lucky well. Dark. Um, spying uh, on the Giants over there. Um, yeah, I think he's pretty right though with the back line being yeah, a bit Yeah, well, suspect. I think a lot of people um, had a lot to say about the back line and we'll mm. obviously talk about that 
shortly. Oh, yeah. Um, but we are definitely missing Griffin Logue. That is for sure. Griff, please come home, sir. We miss you. Goodbye, my Griffin. Should we sing? No, please okay. don't. <laughs> Goodbye, my Logue. Okay, next one, next one. <laughs> okay. Like, all right, all right. People. All right, I apologise. I apologise, <laughs> listeners, for that. If you want a full version, let me know. Um, okay, this one's from Marcus. Here we go. Hey, Josh. Hey, Marnie. Hey, all of North Melbourne. Long time listener, first time talker here. Ooh. I've actually got a question. Um, my question is, Lizard and 40, are they kind of poo-poo? Not sure if I liked their game. Now, if that's not in-depth analysis, that's the sort of language I wanted to hear on Fox footy. When David King's dissecting the game, I want to hear him say poo-poo. Okay. You're going to add that to your shoe list as well? Right it's, in it's Fox a big, footy? It's a, big, it's a big... There's a lot of stuff I've got to bring up at Fox. Um... I think two different situations, um, and we can obviously talk about this a little bit further. I thought that the promise that Lazaro showed in the preseason compared to his game today, probably not comparable. I think he was underwhelming in comparison to what he sort of delivered showed in, in the, the pre-season. pre-season. Yeah, I am yeah. willing to give him another another shot, though. I think yeah. that he's not. He wasn't droppable bad. No, right? I don't he, think so. He I don't probably, think he was bad. I don't think he was good. I think he was he was there yeah. and he contributed in spots, but maybe wanted him to get around the ball a little bit more, I um, guess. I think that Eddie Ford played his role. I don't think he really blew me out of the water. Mm. Um, and I think that we've obviously had a discussion pre-season around him and, and Curtis and Paul Curtis He's definitely... He's probably a bit underdone too, though. Yeah. I mean, he was injured for a bit of the pre-season. Um, I thought that, again, I also don't think Ford was droppable. I just think that it's probably just a bit of an adjustment. And when you're making a comparison between the two of them, there was an obvious standout if you're comparing Curtis and Ford. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, look, I just think that... Both of them probably underwhelming to what we're used to or what we expected. Yeah. Um, but I do think that both of them did enough to keep their spot for another week. I agree. I mean, Ford kicked a goal as well, didn't he? Yeah, and he... he, 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 he the work rate was good because there was times that he was pushing down into the back line as well. Yeah, and he, um, you know, creating opportunities and he was doing his pressure... Is excellent and it has. He's very been. dynamic too. Um, like you never know what he could do when he's around the ball as well. Well, I just so. think one thing you know with Ford is you're always going to get 100 percent effort, and he's always yep. going to do as much as he can in the situation that he's in, be it attack, be it defend, and that's something that is really yeah. rare to find. I think with Ford as well, one of the biggest thing I noticed from the game, you see, he's, he's growing mutton chops at the moment. You see how long his sideburns were. Good on him. He's oh. so rogue. I, I the swagger on that man. <laughs> Top I can't tier. believe he didn't wear the uh, the pit viper sunglasses on the, to, to the game because if Mason Cox can wear goggles, why can't he? Yeah, I mean, we can ride into the AFL. <laughs> Another and one on that. the list. <laughs> We're got a busy week ahead. Okay, uh, the last voice message here from Jimmy. Um, there was a few we couldn't get to, and a few that were sent and didn't actually have anything attached. So, oh. um, uh, apologies, guys, if we didn't get to you. Um, but hey, like I said, next week um, we will try and get to more. But this one is from Jimmy. Tidy up a few disposals going forward. Bombing it long. Uh, bombing it in over the forwards' heads. A few backmen need to have a hard look at themselves. But all in all, not a bad effort. Go the mighty ruse. Go the mighty ruse. I think that sums it up. Not a bad effort. Not a bad effort. Um, I do agree with kicking the ball like over Larky's head a lot of the time. Yeah. Larky did get nudged out of a lot of contests and he needs to be stronger. He wasn't really obviously a contested marking threat, um, but the delivery to his chest was fairly non-existent. Well, that's been an issue for a very, is very long time. kind of just a North thing. So. Yeah. Anyway, um, thank you for the voice messages as well. Furthernorthpod at gmail.com to send yours in. E- after every game, instantly I'm going to be asking you guys for these. Put as much spice, hot takes and a personality into them as you can because, hey, the funnier you are, the more you'll get on the podcast. We so. love hearing from you guys and hopefully next week we'll be um, listening to a few of these after a win. So be sure to get your memos ready and send them through to us. We Every own week. Frio. We're Frio's daddy. So, you know, Frio don't – they may as well not even show up to the Eddie Ford show. Okay, calm down, Josh. <laughs> you always on? say I'm negative. I'm trying to be positive and then you say, <laughs> oh, okay, calm down. I can't win. I can't do anything, guys. I can't do anything right. I'm a Frio sympathiser, so that's the oh, issue yuck. I think as well. <laughs> yuck. They're, oh. ger- they're, you know, they're Guernsey with the red, the green, the anchor and the purple. It's the best of all time. It's uh, like that jersey is the pug of jerseys because – like a like a pug, it's only 
good because it's old, not because it's actually good. It's just nostalgic. Like a it's pug so is only good. cute because it's so gross that you're almost sorry for it. That's exactly how I feel about That's that. That's actually a really good analogy. But yeah. I do love the Frio. Um, the yeah, but Frio do you love vintage. it because it looks good or do you love it because it's vintage and nostalgic? Yeah, I think all of Fremantle's vintage stuff is really good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I think it's gross, but it's cool because it's nostalgic. Anyway, this isn't a Fremantle podcast. No, much to my disappointment. All right, let's get <laughs> on. <laughs> all right, let's dissect let's the, game. the game. Let's, let's get Let's jump into the, the game. game. Um, okay, so we're going to go positives and negatives sort of by quarter. I've got some notes here. I think you've got some notes, Marnie, as well. Yeah. So um, we're going to go positives and negatives for each quarter, quarter by quarter. Um, but we'll also talk. We won't maybe go on too many tangents here because we do have key points and best on ground, players we wanted more from, and Sean Atley, club champ, is coming back too. So first quarter. Yeah. Um, we'll go positives first. Okay. I think the build-up of halfback when we used our hands for the handball – was pretty good. Um, we strung together some really good passages of play and um, we'll talk about the kicking after, but when we used our hands, I think we were actually pretty good. I think so too. And I think that's part of the whole view to be more attacking in general and just sort of move the ball quickly down the field. Um, and it looked it looked pretty good when we could get it right. Mm. That's obviously the, the key is getting it right. Getting it right. I think we tried to play a little bit too quick sometimes as well. And it's easy for us to sit here and say that watching it. There was some times where I feel like there was a handball on and they didn't take the risk. But yeah. then there's other times where they took the risk and it was way too risky. And I think that's just maturity, you know, learning the game plan. It is round one um, and we are coming up against a top four, if not premiership contending team. So, yeah. But that is a positive, I think, by hand. I think we did a lot of good things off half back. Um, Wardlaw was definitely my player of the first quarter. Oh, God, he was so good. Um, you know, he throughout the game, so I think that he ebbed and flowed a little bit, which we'll talk about. But first quarter, George Wardlaw was everywhere. Yeah, he was. And you couldn't get past him. No. He was tackling everything. He was, you know, providing an option. He was, you know, moving the ball through the ground. It just... Oh, it was actually so – yeah, it was actually next level good. He was just popping up at every contest and yeah. um, hit a few targets by foot in the first quarter. Um, the rest of the game a little bit more questionable. But um, first quarter, I think he was the best on the ground. Something else I liked, and I know this is a, a big uh, debate for us, which we'll talk about, is Callum Coleman-Jones. First quarter-wise, I think – uh, he presented well up the ground. He took a nice mark on the wing and uh, I think he crashed a few packs. I'm not saying he was our best player at all by far. I definitely wanted Thank more God. from him hmm. and uh, I don't think he was great on the day, but I also don't think he was a negative. I liked in the first quarter, I think he played fairly well, took a good mark and I don't know, just was the presence we needed. M more execution would have been great, but you know, first quarter I think it was bad. Dersma was the same. I was really impressed. Dersma took a nice contested mark for one of his first possessions. Um, obviously, his first kick was a goal. He has an outstanding <coughs> vertical leap. Like, he and his yes. reach. I mean, he can get higher than Very just clean about hands. any player on the ground. Yep. He yeah. was really, really good and today. And that's why I've put those two in the same thing, was because in the first quarter, they both took good contested marks to sort of relieve the pressure yeah. off us. Because for the rest of the day, or a lot of the rest of the day, we couldn't take a contested mark to save our lives. Like nearly half our contested marks seemed to be in the first quarter. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously the groundwork from us wasn't great and the ball transitioned quick. But um, I think they were good. Obviously, Dersma, um, Dersma's first quarter, kicking his goal, the first goal of the game for us as well. Yes. What an introduction and doesn't he – we'll talk more about him after, but doesn't he look – comfortable and ready to like impact games. yeah he just you know straight out of the gate um i thought he was yeah really really exciting in that first quarter and you know we've spoken about this um a little bit over the past few weeks but in that first quarter in particular it really was those young guys stepping up and mm. they really were setting the standard i mean harry sheasel's another one he started in the midfield and yep. he looked really Powell good alongside well. george i thought tom powell played a really really good game as well actually he was definitely yep. one of our better better players on the day um so yeah, I think uh, I think it was a an interesting first quarter, um, and I think that those guys all definitely. I mean, CCJ questionable, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the rest of them definitely set the standard early. Yeah, it was it was looking it was looking rough in the first ten minutes of the quarter. Like it was, de I was definitely getting the feel of we're going to get absolutely slaughtered here. I think we did well to keep ourselves in the game and to I think that goes the bleeding throughout a little bit. The whole game as well. There's a I agree. we spoke throughout the game a little bit and. Mm. Um, a couple of times we both said to each other, oh, this is going to get ugly. And then 
it was sort of we sort of stemmed the bleeding and, yeah, and we're made able to steady runs. the ship a little bit. Um, there was obviously a couple of patches there where we just sort of lost control and ultimately we lost the game. But I think it's and I know we'll probably talk about this a little bit later. But our ability throughout the game to either hold our ground or to claw our, claw our way back into the game is yeah, not something that we've there. really seen for a really, really long time from North. And I think that was mm. such an impressive – and I know we have a young side and I know we've spoken about immaturity already, but on the flip side, that's a sign of maturity. Yeah, not and not I, not letting – sometimes I thought the body language seemed a little bit down. Look, you never know. It's, it's hard to tell. But we didn't – like actually in the game – give up very much, I think. Or we it looked to be something like we are giving up and then all of a sudden we'd just flick a little bit of a switch and then drag ourselves back into the game yeah. and make it really grubby. Yeah. Um, nothing, and once again, like we'll continue this theme, but nothing we did was really clean, but we didn't stop sort of fighting our way back into the game somehow, even though it didn't look great sometimes. We always found we a way. Stepped, uh, we stepped up and we sort of kept ourselves in it. Yeah, 100%. And I think that's definitely an overall really, really impressive thing, I think, against a side that, as you mentioned, probably is looking like... Arguably premiership favourites. Yeah, yep. this early on in the season. Um, if, and obviously, you know, they were prelim finalists last year and they've got off to a hot start this year. So, yeah, I think our ability to do that against such a such a classy outfit in the Giants was definitely a positive. Mm. Some of the negatives, um, <clears throat> and we'll try not to like uh, dwindle on them too much, but they are here, so we can't gloss over them. Um, we got cut up through the middle of the ground and from stoppage all day. Yeah. Um, I know the centre clearance stats suggest we did pretty well, but it was the efficiency coming out of the clearances. Or after we cleared the ball, what did we do with the ball? Yeah. I think is the biggest thing. Mm. All day, the Giants were super clean. They got very quick transitions out of the middle, yeah. out of the ruck contests, even when the ball hit the ground and it was open play. They were just cleaner. They had more players around the ball and they walked that ball through the middle of the ground all day. Yeah, well, they looked – I think when they got – you know, when they turned the ball over and out attacking 50, the way they just sort of took the ball from end to end so seamlessly. There was always another option They're to under pressure. Too. They looked like a class above when they did that and we just had no answers for them. No. And often it resulted in one of their um, – one of their forwards taking an uncontested mark inside forward Absolutely. 50, um, which was quite hard to watch. So at times you're just sitting there and you're thinking, where's the pressure? Yeah. And, and where you know where are our players? And a lot of them were caught ball watching, well, there, uh, which is quite hard. Well, there's a good segue, like two points there we can talk about. Um, the open players in our defensive 50, so the Giants forward line, very reminiscent of last year's football. Um, you know, the one we reference all the time is, is Joe Danaher, uh, in gather round against Brisbane last year, just getting so many open marks uh, with Ben Mackay about a kilometre away from him and he just uncontested marks the ball and the goal screen kicks goals. Yeah. That was, and I know we're trying to play a zone, but I think we're way too young to play a zone and the some of the space the Giants forwards found, one is because our defence looked re lost at times, but also I wasn't expecting the turnovers to maybe happen so quickly and clearly our defence from this zone we're trying to play when we've got the ball doesn't have the ability to read when we're going to turn it over and be able to man up because there was a lot of uncontested marking in the 50. Yeah, look, one thing I do want to say about the def the defence in, and I think it's a big, big talking point and a big point of concern for a lot of people. Rightly so, after yep. today. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of issues there. Not only do we have a very young, inexperienced backline, we've got a backline that hasn't really played together yep. any football at all. I mean, you look at that backline today, and Aiden Kaur's the most experienced one in there, but he's played most of his football somewhere else. I mean, Aiden Kaur's only been yeah. in North for a few years. You've got Shees, who was, you know, in the back line, but this is only his second season. And it feels like he's been with us forever, but in reality, it's only his second season. I know that Fisher has experience, but he's just come from Carlton. You've got Pink and you've got Dawson, who have played like six games between them. Yeah, You've got yeah, Goda, who's only played a handful of games and probably now will miss the rest of the season, which mm, is just heartbreaking. Yeah. So I think that... These things take time to gel and I'm not – I don't want to – I also yeah. was a bit frustrated and a bit shocked at, at, at the – at times just sheer breakdown of yes. our defence. But I think it's one thing that – I Keeping don't want to – It's important to keep it in mind because I don't want to overreact because on the flip side there were signs there that it can get better. There were individual yeah. players there that made me feel like it probably can get better. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just kind of want to – 
we'll obviously, and I understand, we'll make comments about about our backline today and individual pieces of play and individual people that probably didn't step up the way we would have liked. But I think that it is so important to have that kind of view on the backline is that if this was round 10 and 11 and we'd played a handful of games together and, you know... Yes, yes, need, I agree with they that. Need, yeah, they yeah, need yeah. some time to figure each other out. So yeah, for sure. I just want to make that comment before we go into attacking the, the back line too much. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, I watched the game and I too have my issues with the back line. Yeah, like, yeah. You know. Look, we're not going to gloss over that. No, but, but keeping I think in that's mind important that, to Take it remember. with a grain of salt a little bit that it, I understand it is a young back line, but we can't pretend it was something it wasn't. Let's make these comments and then revisit them in six weeks' time and yeah. see where we're at. Like Helmet Jerry, everyone's opinion is ready to be changed. Yes. Um, <laughs> Correct. Um, LDU, this is a massive one for me. And once again, we will talk about it a bit more after. But in the first quarter, he had a, cha- a couple of chances to put a good, a hard tackle in to grab the ball when he was going to get tackled and take possession and he won't. Well, it was lazy. And I think LDU was really soft in this game. I think his stat line was really good. And if you just saw the stats and highlights, you'd think he had a great game. The, he's the player I'm the most conflicted on out of this game because stats suggest he was great. That was one of the softest games I've seen a player play. He is no contested work. And the chances he's got to really put his body on the line, he doesn't do it. Not in this game. He's got the ability to. He's got the size to. LDU's a star. But that's the side of the game that he needs to be better at. I think he was good today and I think that he worked his way into the game. I agree. But it's that expectation because we know... He's our number one midfielder. You need to step up, show Wardlaw, show Sheasel, show Lazaro, show Powell. This is the standard to set. I just think, That's what a Simkin would have done. No, well, that's the thing is we know what he's capable of and I think the frustrating thing with LDU and we've had a couple of players like this in the past and he's an excellent player and he's a star and I think that what he'll do for this club in the long run will be incredible. But, you know, he has that ability mm. to reach that next level. Like he could yeah. be he could be Petrarca. He yeah, hundred percent. He could be Petrarca. He should be racking up brown low votes. Left, nearly right weekly. and centre. Yeah. yeah. But he just doesn't want to go there. And I don't know if it's because he doesn't, you know, it looked a bit lazy. Yeah. And you know, it's hard because you watch him bobbing and weaving out of traffic and then he'll turn the ball over. So the the or, good things he did were elite today. Um, elite. Absolutely. But he's not uh, he's not a complete player no. yet. But he can and this is the thing, and maybe this is why I'm being a little bit harsh saying because it was a very you want weak more point, from Because he can do more and I know he can. He can be one of the best mids in the comp easily. He's shown that before. That he needs to do the hard stuff. He needs to do what a Cunnington would have done. Not to that degree, because we want he's a different player. But he can't be shy and afraid of putting his head over the ball or getting tackled hard when you're taking possession. You get tackled around the ribs and taken to ground. He, I think he's scared of that. I thought he's a little bit hesitant with that. He did it last year against Geelong too. I remember there was a ball, an open ball in the air for everyone to jump at and get, and he stopped. And he watched the ball and it hit the ground and it went and it was a turnover and he did the same thing today. And I just, I know how good he can be and he can't, that's not good. Uh, a 25-year-old or 24, 25-year-old now, Yeah. You, you're, you're one of the best players at the club. You're arguably the best player at the club. You've got to set a better standard than that. And he's got to go in harder. Well, I think, you know, and I was just reading a little bit of commentary on Twitter before I mm. got here. Um, a lot of the talk was that he was one of the best on ground for us today. Yeah, and I don't disagree with that too. That's fine. But imagine, but at the at the at the level he was playing at. So imagine how much better we would probably be across the board if his personal standard was raised. And I get it's a lot of pressure to put on someone, but you that's, were the number four the draft picked and you – number four draft pick and you are so talented yep. and you have the ability to mm. transform this club. Own it. Yep. Take it and run it's with it. It's your opportunity and right now. And if you now. don't want to – and, you know, he's he wasn't voted into the leadership group at the start of the year. Yep. And if you don't think that you're a leader – you know, in off the field, off the field, you then can do it, do it through field. your actions. Yep, I completely agree. You're there to play football. You're a bloody good footballer. Yes. So just take it by the horns and then run with it. Yep. Because I think that he's got the ability to inspire. He's got the ability 
to lead yep. the club right through his and actions. And he did that last year on so many occasions. And there were plenty of times in this game where I just sat there and thought, wow, like yep. that is just something that I have not... His breakaway from the contest and his just sidestep with the ball is elite. Yeah. Like you can't, like if he's you stepping... You can't argue with that. Yeah, it's unbelievable. But it's just these little moments. This isn't a criticism on him as a complete player. It's just a criticism on an element of his game which he needs to do We much just better. want more because yep. I think that everyone around him will be better off if we got more. For sure. So Sam yeah. Taylor uh, bodied our, oh, uh, well, he's our forward just line. And he's the, probably the best defender in the league. I did say, yeah. um, you know, oh, oh, Harris, Harris Andrews. Andrews. I, he's probably got more runs on the board. But look, it, Sam Taylor is he's very, very, very good. He and is. he showed that today. Constantly edging Larky under the contest, intercept marking everything. Yeah. Um, he dominated us, especially in the first. Yeah. Um, Open players. We were talking about open players in the fifty, um, and we can't hit a target. That's no, the last. That's the last thing. The last negative for this quarter. There's less negatives as we go. A lot of those will flow through the rest of the game, guys. So we're not going to be this negative the whole way through. But um, our kicking, uh, and um, I guess we'll point out LDU, but especially my 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 guy, my favourite player, George Wardlaw. The dude can't kick uh, very no. straight. And so, that's been an issue. And if he can figure that out, him and LDU will be. Petrarca, Clayton Oliver level of unreal. Yeah, but, um, I think it's an issue we've had at the club for a very, very, very long yeah, time, unfortunately. Just skill errors. Yeah. Anyway, let's go to the second quarter because this was probably the best quarter of the game, okay? Um, we obviously made a bit of a run in this quarter and – the I, fight back was the very, fight back very was real. impressive. And it really shows, and I think this is something that Alistair Clarkson is slowly putting into our team, is the, keep fighting the will and the belief that we can still do it. Yeah. We were never completely out of this game, not no, once. No. Were we ever really, really in it, maybe for s- points of the game? But, you know, I think we always knew that the Giants would make another run. But I don't think we were ever out of the game. And I don't no. think we were ever, like, so far down that we – the players gave up like we've seen in years gone by. Not Maybe not last year as much, but definitely David Noble era. Well, 15 minutes to go in the last quarter, I was sitting, we were sitting watching and mm. like myself, my brother and my dad were like almost out of our seat because it just felt so much closer than it probably was. And this is the thing uh, that I was thinking when we watched the game was – you know, it, it to me, it felt like we were 60 points down with the disparity and maybe how clunky we were compared to how clean they were. But then when you're looking at the scoreboard and you see us kick a bunch of goals and really grinding for everything we get and we're like 20 points down, I'm like, it feels so much worse than it is, but we're in the game and we, we don't stop fighting and believing. And I think we kept that all the way through the game, which was really, really good. Um, what was it 39 points in the end, which I yeah. think for a team that's bottom four and uh, an arguable premiership contender, I'm pretty happy with that. And, you know, it's another talking point later on, but I, I, I'm still a bit conflicted about how I feel about the game. But look, we'll dissect that a little bit more. Um we did have to work very hard for our goals, but um, our best in that quarter was really good. Yeah, and I said this to you um, just before we jumped on air to record. My overall feeling from this game, because I, and I've said this, I said this last week on the mm. pod, I never, you never accept a loss. You can't have that mentality when you're trying to rebuild a club and ultimately football's a business and you're trying to win games. So I'm not sitting here and I'm not going to accept it, especially because the script of the game went quite differently to how I thought it was going to be. Mm. Um, but our best football really excited me today. And I yep. don't know about anybody else, but that is something I have not felt for... I actually got goosebumps talking about it. That's, oh. <laughs> oh, watch out, Marnie. Easy. Um, wow, I'm such a nuffy. It's so <laughs> you are sad. You such a nuffy. You genuinely make me look like a bandwagon fan sometimes. For anyone who's not watching on YouTube, by the way, I'm wearing a Cam Zerha t-shirt. Just to top, <laughs> just to top all of this off, okay? Unbelievable. Um, but that is the most excited I've been about yeah, I agree. Our f- our look football at the game for plan a very, like very long time. In the preseason, that was the first time I'd seen North play a, a certain style. That's the yeah. first time for a long time when I've watched us and gone, that's what we're trying to do. And when we when we did put that, it wasn't enough, but when we put it together in the game today, yeah. maybe I got a couple of goosebumps too. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my God, we're such nuffy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I know I am for no, sure. I, I get called a nuffy all the time. I have so much North chat at work. It's unbelievable. Oh, God. 
Well, well, look, and that's enough goosebump chat. Um, I think the, other, the last positive, maybe that we, you know, and, and the positives from the first call that we touched on, some of them did continue, like the like handball transition and things like that. And yeah. Wardlaw was still decent in the, in this quarter too. Oh, he so he um, was so good today. Well, I don't think for the whole game, first half, for, first half. But especially. being a young player, you kind of expect 100%. them to fade Wardlaw out. Wardlaw is my favorite player, and I love him, and I love him. His first half was something special. The other positive uh, is we kicked out trade. We yeah, took so our we, chances we when we got We made them. the most of our opportunities when we did get them. So I do agree with that. Mm. And I've always said this about North. Like, how many points do we kick for the game? Five, six points or something yeah, like that? Lot. Like, we're, we're very good with the chance that we can get. And if we can ever get to a point in our, with this t- club and this team that we get the inside 50s that we give up, imagine if that was turned. Imagine how many points we're going to kick. You know what I mean? Like if, if we get proper inside 50s like a good club does and actually can mark inside the 50, mm. imagine how many points we're going to kick because we convert better than nearly any other club, I reckon. Yeah, and I think that, you know, part of this new game style is we do expect to kick more goals. Yes, so and as we saw today, it does leave us open. But if we, if it, say we get in two, three years' time, we've the, the defence has matured, we've signed a really good defender, we're just more solid at winning it out of the middle – I'm I'm really excited about what this forward line can do going forward. I think it's a long game, but I think it'll be worth the wait. That's 100%. for sure. Yeah. God, I hope so. Um, a couple of negatives here. Uh, which for the we, third quarter we're talking about? Uh, second quarter. Second quarter. Second quarter. Yep. We're in the second quarter now. Still. Um, well, it hasn't been that long. Mm. Anyway, let's not argue about that. Let's argue about other stuff like Coleman Jones. Um, <laughs> the, the physicality for me lacked. My biggest criticism of this game, we were soft as Butter. I've never seen a North Melbourne side as soft as we were. We refused to like crash packs, tackle hard, bump, shepherd. I was really, really disappointed today with the lack of contested ball and physicality from everybody on the team. How much do you think that has been impacted by the general state of play of the game at the moment? I think a lot, but I th- a lot because there's so much today and I watched a little bit of the Geelong game and the Hawthorne and Essendon game earlier. Yeah. Gee, there is a lot of soft free kicks. And I don't think last year there was a heap of soft stuff going on. Of, co- of course there is and it's creeping into the game, but I'm really confused from the opening rounds of football how they're umpiring some things. Um, I'm yeah. not. I think players are really worried to just do anything. Even the 50 meter penalty we gave way to Tom, Tom Green, and I think it was the first quarter. I don't really know what Paul Curtis did wrong there. He just sort of stood there, and the umpire didn't give him a chance to come back or stand back a little bit more. Yeah. But if you take two steps over the mark, I know this isn't the exact question we're talking about, but like if you take two steps over the mark, I don't see how that is. Um, impeding the game or like something yeah, that's well worth a 50 not, meter penalty. it's not threatening Tom Green's well-being mm. and safety. But even like very minor high contact or high bumping, I understand it's, it's sensitive at the moment, but the, the most minor knock to the head or like graze of the head, it's always been called a free this year and I don't like it. It's really hindering the contested side of the game and I think, you know, there's plenty of opportunities we had, especially Toby Pink, which we'll get to, to crash packs and he didn't. Um, but yeah, maybe it is a bit of hesitation being confused or hesitant because we don't know how they're umpiring it and it does seem quite soft and strict this year. Yeah, it just – and I, I do agree with you. I mean, we did walk away winning the tackle count and winning the tackles inside mm-hmm. our forward 50, which yep. is definitely a positive sign no matter, you know, how yep, no matter what. soft yep. we, we looked. Um, and I think that there were times where the pressure was really, really good. But I do agree with you. I think that, you know, it just seems like we're almost too scared to – you know, um, if there's a ball open to be won, but almost too scared to attack it, and we kind of just leave it and the mm. Giants took it and ran with it. But then it just kind of makes me sit here and think, well, how much of that is being in being impacted by just the mm. general um, commentary of the game at yeah, the moment? I think that's a that's a absolutely something that it could be affecting. I also think maybe the quick ball movement meant we were rushing forward and when it got turned over so quickly... A bit we just shocked Yeah, but we didn't have the players around the ball to make yeah. those contests all the time, but well, we need to because the times we did have a one-on-one with a, even not just in our back 50 around the ground, we got bullied. Yeah, we did and we definitely got... I mean, look, the Giants are a much classier They're very physical um, outfit team too. and they are definitely in a league 
or in a class above us, I should yep. say. They're where we want to be in a few years' time. I think you know? so, definitely. But, um, you know, it's good to have these sorts of games to be able to learn from them mm. um, as well. Um, the last two points I've really got here, which is similar. Um, we, manning up in the on the on their forwards in the second quarter was still pretty poor. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the marking stats, which we'll talk about later, were back that up. Yeah. Um, and LDU in this quarter, I know I'm picking on him a little bit, but I expect so much from him. There was a couple of times where he was jogging, not putting in the effort to chase, to get back, and he looked gassed in this quarter, and I'm concerned by that. I'm concerned about the team's fitness overall. I know it's first game, they're young, but fitness was a big thing in our preseason. Um, I was a little bit concerned by him. Charles Lazaro was similar at times today. The lack of desire and fight to get back. You saw Dersma was running to get back. Paul Curtis was sprinting to get players he probably wasn't going to tackle, but it's still putting in that effort. I think LDU today was in second gear with his effort. When he got the ball, he was classy, but his uh, desire to go and get the ball or fight for the ball back, I think lacked a little bit. I'm not going to harp on it much more than that um, because overall I think he played fairly well, but it was that, that hard defensive pressure side of the game which I think was poor yeah and I'll one last thing on LDU and then we'll leave him alone um I was having a chat with a friend of mine after the St Kilda game and we both agreed that LDU sort of just looked like he was in second gear yep. and I was like oh don't worry about it like when round one comes he'll be fine but round one's yeah. here and, and he's still in second gear so yeah. you know it's time to get moving now and we and need him especially with Simkin not being there 100% no matter where you think the team's going to land this year no matter what you think's going to roll out for the rest of the season you need to give 100% yep because there were times that we were really in this game. Yeah. And then honestly, I've, and this is why I find it really hard to land on how I feel after this game because mm. I went into this um, expecting, you know, us to be within five or six goals being a good effort. Ha- you know, there were times in this game where I thought we could actually bloody win this thing. There was, m- we there could was moments. Honestly, we could honestly win this thing. We got within a couple of kicks at one stage. Yeah, no, I know. And, you know... I guess after watching the game, and I, the thing that makes me maybe disagree, with, I, know, I know we disagree on that a little bit, I never felt like we were going to be able to get over the top of them. Not because, you know, we, we don't have the ability to do sometimes, but the way we'd played to that point was a bit clunky. If we were cleaner and say LDU was dominating the way we know he can, I reckon you're right. I reckon we could have – we got ourselves in, into positions for the, those big players to be able to step up who need to lead us in those times. I think I was just a little bit more hesitant than you on that because I felt like most of the day we were a bit clunky. Whether you, yeah, yeah, however you feel about that, that's <laughs> fine. But I think that you can tell me I'm wrong. It's fine. No, no, no. And look, maybe. I mean, you can only really just yeah, look yeah. at what unfolded, and ultimately, we lost the game by 39 points. So that was that. But from what I had expected, my expectation going in, yeah, yeah, compared to what unfolded, I mean, maybe we're a lot closer than what I actually think. And I, but I think that's the hard thing about this game. Um, are we or are we not? Because I think in some areas I'm really excited, but other ones I'm actually more concerned than I thought I'd be. So that that's where I'm struggling with this game. I think the I think the hardest part with this game is that there are so many new faces, and it is really it's a young team. It's you know so many new faces, um, and just so many people and players needing to adjust, like to readjust. And I think that mm. these first sort of six to eight weeks is going to be a bit of a teething, yeah, a teething yeah, absolutely. thing now. An injury to Josh Goda yeah. off the bat doesn't really help. I know we'll talk on that, touch on that soon. But um, I think, you know, it'll be interesting to re-listen to our comments today, you know, after, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, after around eight or nine and then mm. see where we're sitting and see how we feel then. I agree. So the third quarter. Um, I didn't have heaps. I think most of the positives I've put already mirror what we continued on in the third. So to just give a couple of different ones, the biggest thing from this quarter, Cam Zerha went into the middle. Oh, my now God. Now, you, you talk, money. You've got the shirt on. I know I you're... I uh, the shirt on. Speaking I'm of goosebumps, <laughs> she's about to talk about bull in the centre square. <laughs> I'm a big advocate for bull um, for bull in the middle, and yep. I did say this um, pre-season. Yep. I loved this from Clarko because... Yep. I completely agree. Zerha had an okay first quarter, and they didn't touch the ball in the second quarter. Yes. It was his 100th game, and I think someone like Cam Zerha is a confidence player. Yep. And, you know, once he gets on a roll, that's kind of when he He's so dynamic, up. too. That's the best way, because I think... 
I think at the start of the third, the Giants kicked the first couple, I think. The first, yeah. And I think minutes. it's really good for Clarko to be like, we need something out of the middle right now. Let's throw Zerhar in there for some chaos. And I really think he stemmed the bleeding a lot, gave us a lot more physicality, which we've talked about with LDU and other players like that yeah. were lacking. And I think he just gave us another dynamic in there and dragged it back towards our favour a little bit more. I think so too. And I, I why I love this from Clarko is because he – knows how to support his players when yep. they need it. And I yes, think that I agree with is, that too. And I think this is a criticism I have had of David Noble um, one once of many. upon a time. Yeah, one of many. <laughs> um, but there were many, many times um, under David Noble where I thought Zeeble really struggled. Mm. And, and he, this was in his last year as captain. And I thought that he really, really needed the support from Noble. Chuck Zeeble in, you know, in the middle or Chuck, you know, Yep. Put Zebul close Change to the something. ball. Exactly. Yep. Support Zebul and support your captain mm. to be able to deliver. Now that's something he failed to do, but I think Clarko really recognised this and saw the opportunity. Yep. And I mean, the reward was excellent. I agree. I thought that Zerha's second half was, in particular his third quarter, yes. was out of this world. And it's interesting to see that he didn't get any minutes even to test it out in the preseason. I really, I'd love to interview Clarkson. If you're listening, mate, please come on the podcast. Um, <laughs> I'm really interested as to why he didn't get a second, a one centre bounce in the preseason, not just to trial it. Well, we knew that he. I mean, he flirted he in the middle year. in the middle last year a little bit, and we know he's capable but of it. But obviously, after dropping the weight too, I think that said to all the fans, he was in there a bit last year. He's dropped a few kilos this year. Surely that means bull in the middle. And then when we didn't see it all preseason, we were like, oh. Especially, but I guess lack of forward line options as well. Blah, yeah, blah, blah, I was going to say lack of forward line options. We need, also, we need two or three of him to be it's fair. It's also really important to remember from the pre- end of the preseason to today, mm. we've lost two midfielders. We've yeah, lost 100%. Thomas and we've lost Simpkin. Yep. So, you know, you maybe... Can, I think you can throw, like, Luke McDonald in that as well. I think even though Luke McDonald is a little bit... And not, not a midfielder specifically, but, like, Luke McDonald is happy to put his head over it and and, and go in hard. And to lead physically. And to, and to lead physically. Like, yeah. as we're saying with LDU, say LDU had uh, Lukey Max brain, I think he's more than happy to, like, put his head over it and dive on something and really get stuck in. I know Luke McDonald has flaws in his game, which we saw last year, but I'm almost giving him the Kane Turner treatment where I'm like, if everyone was as passionate as Kane Turner, look how good we'd be. <laughs> and Luke McDonald's almost that guy. Luke McDonald is in our best 22. I don't think Luke McDonald shouldn't make the 22. A lot of people are questioning. I think it's a bit of an overreaction. But um, my main point is there, yeah, if, if, if they had that desire... I think everyone needs to have that. And Zerha always does have it. So when he went into the middle, I loved how he sort of got stuck in and definitely changed the game. Yeah, he was good. Really, really liked that move. Um, and then, I mean, my only other my other positive was our contested ball was better, which is a direct thing from Zerha. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, he was really um, good. Some negatives in this one, uh, and we'll talk about him a little bit more after, like I've said, heaps. Um, Toby Pink got absolutely bullied uh, today. I have some opinions on Toby Pink. Um but I understand it was his first game, but I, do, I think it was a very poor performance from him. I think he got bullied the entire day. Um, Jesse Hogan made him look like a child. The dude is big. The dude is set. His body size is ready for AFL football. Plenty of times where he could have crashed a pack or at least put a body on and he didn't. Um, I'm giving, I w- I'd like to give him another chance, but I think he was very, very poor today. Harsh because it's his first game, and probably a little I'm, bit harsh. I'm not saying he can't improve, and I'm not saying he doesn't deserve another chance. But I, I didn't really like what I saw from Toby Pink today. Keeping in mind it is his first game, and I fully acknowledge that. But I'm just saying what I saw on the day. I think he was pretty poor. I thought he was okay. A lot of mistakes, um, but he did do a, a few really nice things as well. And I think it, in time, um, yeah, yeah. you know, hopefully he'll improve with a little bit more experience mm. under your belt. Um, but unfortunately for him, I mean, Jesse Hogan was probably the best on the ground today. Six and he was unstoppable. Or seven. Yeah, six or whatever it was. Um, I'll stop counting. Unstoppable, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and I don't think that anyone was really going to get in his way. So No. Yeah, um, unfortunately. All their tolls kicked. Well, he kicked six or seven. I think uh, Riccardi and Cadman both kicked a couple as yeah, well. Yeah, well, so the spread. The tolls really dominated us today. That, and that, that's the thing that we really need is we need, you know, a second and third forward yeah. that are, you know, really, really reliable. Um, Agreed. And so, yeah, look, I do feel for, for Toby Pink, not his, not, not his best on debut, but, you know, it's only up up from here. And I, I hope do so. think that he will get another opportunity, uh, whether that's next week or whether, you know, we give Chom a Bring run a at it. back in. Um, um, but I think we, you know, we'll see him again this season at some yeah, point. Yeah, and I've got no doubt that you know 
I think he, he can be better, better. and I, I'm not saying he won't get better from that. I'm really only giving that kind of harsh opinion on what I saw today. But it doesn't mean I don't want him to have another chance. doesn't mean I think he'll get better. Um, obviously, it's his first AFL game. But as for the showing today, on a very good forward, yeah, I, I wasn't a massive, massive fan of tough, this game. Uh, tough ask on your first Tough assignment, out. though, and I fully acknowledge mm. that. Um this quarter stood out the most for me with this um, out of all of them. They've always got an extra player to handball to. Yeah. The amount of times there's a line of giants at the backside of the, the ruck contests, it doesn't go our way. Or say Tristan Jerry does tap the ball, but it doesn't go to our players. If it doesn't go directly to our players, we're, we're useless in the defensive side of the game around contests and the centre bounces. Yeah. Um, and that's the lack of thing. When you look at LDU, Lazaro and Powell in the midfield, who's the guy who's going to re- – like when Wardlaw's not in there, I'm really – really worried for the physicality of this. Yeah. Simkin isn't even that sort of guy as well. And that's where I think maybe a Cunnington or something is, we need to replace a player like that. I'm, I'm really concerned about our tackling pressure around the centre bounces and contests. Bailey Scott, there was a lot of bounces and throw-ins, obviously, down in the Giants' forward 50. And Bailey Scott around the contest, he played a lot in the back line. I don't think he's physical enough. I really, I really think we lacked a big physical body in the midfield to be able to get the ball. Um, is a Will Phillips something like that? And I think that's something we can talk about with a contentious decision not to even be a sub or an emergency. Yeah. Um, Will Phillips isn't the biggest hard, like hard head and body and tackler, but at least he can get the ball from in and under and feed fairly clean disposal. I know other people, the stats suggest maybe not, but I think by hand he's pretty decent in and under a pack. Yeah. And definitely better than the other options we've got. Yeah, I mean, and we can talk about Will Phillips later. I thought this was just absolutely mind blowing that he didn't play today. I completely agree, especially um, with Simkin out um, and maybe a couple of other guys who got into the team. But yeah, look, um, I'm really concerned about Will Phillips and where the club thinks he's at. Well, this is the thing, right? Is I want to know where the cl- where I want to know where Will Phillips is at, and then I want to know where the club expect him to be at, yeah. and how far that gap is. I want to know what he's not doing that they want him to do because last year I think there was a plenty of games where they sent him back to the VFL after some decent performances, yeah. and they said he's got to work on some things. But why do other players like a Kane Turner or a Jack Marnie or a Phoenix Spice or a Flynn Perez get to work on things while playing, but? Will Phillips, who's the most talented by far out of all of those guys, get to work on it in the VFL. I, just, I don't understand yeah. what the theory is there. I back the club's decisions. We don't have a choice, but I'm confused. Yeah, I, I just – I'd love a bit of clarity around it because it's really, you know, from a fan's perspective, and I keep talking about that preseason game against St Kilda, but before today, that's all we had to go off. And I think we lacked a player of what his skill set is. I think so too. I mean, look, he, he had 20 – clearances in a half of football against St Kilda in that Pracky game. Tw- I don't think he had 20. Was it something like that? No, I think he on- I think he only had like 5 or 6 for the game, but it was the most on the ground. Or whatever it was. Mm. Sorry, I'm, that was a very <laughs> very very big over exaggeration. That was. But he, he had the most clearances for our team He had a day. really big impact on the day and it's just like I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, well where is he at and where does the club want him to be at? And like yeah. I said, how far apart are they? Because right now sitting here, it's really hard to know why he's not getting a game. Now, I will say playing Tom Powell was definitely the right decision Correct. today. Yep, I thought 100%. he had a really, really good game. He was good. I think Charlie Lazaro, as we touched on at the top of the show, I thought he was underwhelming to where he had been yes. to in the preseason to this point. I think when he was around the ball, he did okay. Obviously, he's not a big body. But that, I still That's what think we were missing. He, wasn't, he couldn't step up and be what we were lacking. But I think field. he earned his spot in that I agree side. completely, yep. So, I just – I want to know where he fits and I want to know when we're going to see him because I think that he – Given the opportunity, he's a really important and you're, part of this team. You're going to love this, and we haven't spoken about this player to be playing in the midfield at all, but I think if Hugh Green was in that midfield today, our midfield looks better. Yeah, well... <laughs> and that's not trying to uh, toot your own horn, Marnie, of course, but like I, I, the physicality of Hugh Greenwood and his contested work is great, and... I think he would have made a massive, massive difference around the contest today. I think he would have made a massive difference today, full stop. And Marnie didn't even say that to me. That's literally me off the top of my head. We haven't even talked about this um, even before we started recording. You can tell we spend recording. too much time together, obviously. Absolutely. I'm rubbing off on you. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I could sit here and talk about why Hugh Greenwood should have played all day. I did it for five minutes on last week's episode. I <laughs> five could do minutes? It, I could do it for ten minutes on this week's episode. I think it was bleedingly obvious. Um yeah, and that's just another – that is another string to Greenwood's bow. Yeah. I mean, you know, if – say he was in uh, – he was a sub today or something, at least 
you know, throw Bull in there, say we need more going forward, put Bull back in the forward line, and then get Hugh Greenwood in under the pack or swap them. Bull can go in the middle and Greenwood can go up forward. I don't know. I just, we lacked a big physical body today so, so badly. And especially against a midfield as big as the Giants with Canelio and with Green, I don't know how Olazaro is meant to do what he we know he can do against those guys. Yeah, it's a really good point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, okay, fourth quarter. Now, moment of the fourth quarter, especially for Marnie, um, Tristan Jerry took a pack mark and then kicked a goal. Now, I will say I had to go downstairs for How about convenient. two minutes to, what, to get something from downstairs and I missed this. It's so convenient. Um, you know, I – yeah, I completely missed this and <laughs> – I apologise, Helmet, for, for that. Um, but Marnie, paint me a word picture. No, he was really, really good today. Um, and I think everyone agrees with that. Um, and it takes a lot for the two of us to sit here and, you know, gloat about how good no. Tristan but Jerry is. But it's so we're, we're open-minded and we're, like, my opinions never last. 100%. And like I said to you last week on the show. Like, Still got to do it for more for longer and more consistently. No, but for today's game. They're good signs. And like I said to you last week on the show, maybe Goldie leaving now, he can just kind of step in to the role and make it his own. It's make or break for 100%. Him. And yeah. I think he's now got the freedom. He doesn't have, you know, the ghost of Goldie lo- looming over Ooh. him. Ooh. Um, he can really, really, you know, make make his own, make it his own. Um, a criticism I did have of him, last, of him last year was that he just couldn't keep his feet on the ground He all did the fall time. over a bit in the first quarter. He I won't bit, lie. And look, he's a he big d- guy and yeah. he's really, really clumsy. But to take that pack yes. mark and then, you know, He to took go a few back, good marks today, which he wouldn't have taken last yeah, year. Yeah, and then to go back and just, you know, slot it. He's always been a decent kick. Not that he gets many opportunities, but obviously he kicked a couple no, against the Saints. That's true. He, he's year. not. He's not a. He's not a bad. Um, bad shot in front of goal. Look, it was an ice. It was the icing on the cake for him today. I thought he was definitely in our best three players. Yeah. Um. And a lot of people have said that they thought that he was our best. Um. Oof. It was really pleasing. Yeah. And no, I agree. You know, I think that credit where credit's due. He. You know, he's carried. Mm. Um finally carried that preseason form over into today's game and I just really hope that it continues. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about this before we started recording. That's the best game in the AFL, in an AFL game I've seen him play. Yeah, Not a preseason a game or nothing. It, yeah. In the actual AFL season, that is the best game I've seen him play and I want him to back it up next week. Obviously, no Sean Darcy as well next no, week. No, he could. Um, and under the roof at Marvel, um, anything could happen. Don't, it's not slippery under there, Tristan. Um, oh, I keep getting uh, people messaging me saying I say Jerry. It's, it's Sherry. I'm trying my best to say Sherry, but I've said Jerry for so long. I apologize. It kind of is what it is at this point. So I you understand it's from a, about. <laughs> from a different, uh, you know, from a different part of the world. This name, but I'm tr- I am trying my best. I'm just so used to saying Jerry. So I apologize. But if I say Jerry, just pretend I say Sherry. Um, go to Diddy's Achilles. It looks not confirmed Achilles, but it looked it looked like an Achilles. The early report is that he's ruptured his Achilles and we won't see him for the rest of the season. Six minutes to go in the yeah. last game, it's over. I mean, that is just heartbreaking. Devastating. How many injuries are popping up in the opening rounds of footy? It's unbelievable. Yeah. I don't think there's anything to do to do with anything. I don't there's nothing different about the season grounds. Season ending injuries as well. But yeah, but there's been mass ACLs and all sorts of stuff and all sorts of knees going and things. Yeah, it's concerning. Um, I don't think Josh Goda was very good today. I li- I love what I saw from Goda in the preseason and I fully believe he was going to be a really good player for us this year. Today, I don't think he was very good. Um, he was very lost, but he looked to be playing that um, that Luke McDonald role, I guess, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Um, trying to play on a Toby Green. He gave away an incredibly immature free kick, I guess is the best way to say it, on Hogan, I think it was, where he was just running t- at Hogan when Hogan was running at the ball and just pushed him, which is the most obvious free kick I've ever seen. Um, but, you know, the excitement that I saw, of, especially in that Saints game from Goda, suggests that... Um, you know, he's going to be a quality player for us. So it's really hard to see him go down. But, you know, he is exciting when he's running off half back. We've just got too many guys to run off half back. You well, know the thing I mean? with Goder is I think he did minimise Toby Green wasn't really that he, impactful. Toby Green was today. very inaccurate, though. He could have kicked three or four. But yes, I think he did a good job, a good enough job. I just think he gave away silly free kicks. And maybe, maybe because I'm used to seeing him transition the ball so much, he didn't do that. It made him not stand out as I much. I mean, to yeah, me. it was sort of a, he, he did that sort of lockdown role um, on Green. And I yeah. think he did it quite well. Like I said, I think yeah. that um, even though. Toby did miss a few in front of goal. I mean, he only he didn't 
have a lot of yeah, the ball. Yeah, he didn't have a match. That's fair enough. Um, That's he didn't enough. really have a big impact on the game. So I actually thought Goda was quite good. Um, but like you said, we are used to seeing him, you know, yeah. bring the ball outside of our defensive 50. So maybe that's where that would come from. Maybe that's where my – because, you know, now you've said that, I do agree. Like, Toby Green didn't have a massive impact on this game no, and exactly. Goda was on him a lot. So, yeah, fair play to Josh Goda. I just think defensively, I guess, yeah, he was okay. Um, I'm, it's just I didn't see him really take possession of the ball much, run with the ball, use his left foot. I think he's left-footed. Um, or he may know he's right-footed. Whatever foot he uses, who cares? He's good. He, what I'm saying is a good kick. Um, no, he is, you know, definitely. He uh, didn't get to do any of that today, so maybe that's why I was down on him today. But gave away a couple of silly frees. Decent lockdown job. Um on Toby Green. It's just a shame. This a is real how shame. It's ended. To um, see we'll obviously that. wait to see what happens during the week, but, you know, obviously sending our uh, love to him and his family and, you know, hopefully um, hopefully the best outcome. And if it's not the outcome we're hoping for, then a speedy recovery and we'll see him back as soon as we can. Yeah. I mean, I guess we saw this with Miller Bergman in his, well, no, it's not going to his first season, but dislocating his shoulder in round one a couple of years ago and then came back and now he's all available and healthy still. So hopefully Goda can do something similar. Um, yeah, it sucks. The good thing from this is, and I, I don't want to talk about this being a positive because it's obviously not a positive, um, but we do have two players now in the wings that are probably fit and ready to slot into that position. And I think they're more defensive minds as so well. So you've got McDonald and you've got Bergman who you've just yeah. spoken about. I mean, they're the two obvious replacements. Um, yeah. I'd probably go for McDonald first um, and give. you've got to give him another yeah. shot. I it's think you go for McDonald only because he's the captain though. I don't, I'm not fully convinced... I like Luke McDonald. I, I guess I, d- I do think he's in our best 22 at his best, but I kind of want him to earn his spot a bit more. I think Bergman played okay in the preseason, and um, I think defensively he's better than Goda. Um, Goda's a, a better, got more potential, absolutely. But I, I like Miller Bergman. I think he was really solid last year and yeah, was un- like unfairly dropped a lot of, a lot of times. I so like him too. I'd, I'd maybe go with a Miller Bergman personally, but... I guess, yeah, more leadership down there, the better. So so maybe a McDonald on that. But I'm I guess not mad whichever way they yeah, go. Not, yeah, and yeah. I don't think there's a right answer at this stage. It really just depends on, you know, how yeah. we look We look forward to Fremantle and, you know, who they've got on the park. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, no, um, we're yeah, sending all our love to Josh and his family. So that's basically our breakdown of the game. We'll go to a few talking points of what we took away from the performance as a whole. Um, let's talk about the debutants. Let's talk about Big Game Zane and Kirch. They were both really, really good. They looked like they just slotted straight in. They looked like yep. they played 100 games each. Um, Dersma... As you said, big game, Zane. Um, probably Doesn't the get bigger in front of 4,000 at Giant Stadium. Probably the flashier of the two, but I thought McKercher's game was equally as impressive. Um, yeah. Looked really clean and really composed um, and made some really, really good decisions. And I think that both of them will do us great service in the next yeah. 10 to 15 years. No, I completely agree. I, I think I think Dersma had more of an impact on the game with his moments, but McKercher was p- solid all day when he got the ball. I think McKercher ended up with 22 touches and decent disposal efficiency. I maybe didn't notice him heaps until maybe the second half. I think he grew into the game a lot more. I didn't notice heaps of McKercher in the first half, but, you know, the stats definitely made, made it... I didn't think he maybe had a game of 22 touches yeah. uh, while watching it, but no, good on him. Like, he, he looked comfortable with the ball in hand, a decent kick. There's a couple he kicked, to, very accurate kick, but there was probably a player clo- a closing that guy down too much. But no, he looked really, really comfortable. Um, the problem with our back line, though, is we've got too many players like that and not enough players who are physical and defensive-minded. And I think that's going to be the That's an issue that goes yeah, throughout the entire h- team. 100%. Like, yeah. fish is good. Cheese was good. McKerch is good. Goda playing in that role is good. You know, Bailey Scott, for some reason, is always down there. They're all attacking halfbacks. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't, yeah. We're, and we know we're lacking, and that's where I wish a Jackson Archer could do more. Um, maybe one day. But hey, anyway, uh, McKerch, really, really good debut, solid debut. Looks like he's played for a long time. Dersma, I was so impressed. So I was, was I. so, so impressed. Just. Composure to kick the goals, kick their first goal of the game. His marking ability. Phenomenal. Like the, the, the hops on that guy. He well, can his get, reach is just oh, higher than anybody else. But how else. clean his hands are when he gets to them. Yeah. It's like Ben Brown when he used to jump and catch the ball at the highest point with his arms fully extended. He, you know, a lot of players like that will drop 
marks, but he doesn't. And I'm so excited about Zane Dersma. Another thing I love about Dersma was that second goal that he kicked. I mean, that was a big kick. He was right on 50. 100%. And for him in his first game to just go back and to own the moment and to kick the goal, yep. that is so impressive. I mean, 100%. we've got players that have played 100 games and they wouldn't do that. So yeah. for him to really own it, especially in his first game, I thought was excellent. My next point here is um, I can't believe how conflicted I was at halftime. Yeah. I was so confused at halftime with how I felt because the positives were great and the negatives were shocking. And we there was so many moments and it's, it's how quickly it fluctuated from each of these sides. When we had the ball and did things well, I was so excited about our game plan, our play, yeah. what we were doing. When we lost the ball... I think it's been nearly easier than last year to transition through the middle. It's only one game and I believe we'll tighten that up. But I felt like we were 60 points down at halftime. And just by watching the game, if the score wasn't on the screen, I felt like we were getting absolutely obliterated. But we grinded out so much of that first half and got ourselves into a really good position. Once we can use the ball better and we have slightly classier players on the field... I'm excited for what we can do, like we talked about before. But I was, I've never been so conflicted. I've n- genuinely, I'm, even now I'm trying to like understand it and I don't. Well, this is how I, maybe I'll help you. Please. Dissect That's it a little bit. That's why you're here, Manny. Um, our best and our worst are so far apart. Incredibly and I think far apart. that's a really good thing. Yeah, I, I agree. And I'll tell you why. I agree Because forward, yeah. last year, our best and worst definitely weren't this far apart, but our best was not going to be good enough to challenge the Giants the way we challenged them today. Like, yeah, our last best, year's team loses that by 60 Our plus. best wasn't resilient enough to fight back two or three or four times. I know we yeah. had that period under Ratten where we'd let an opposition side get out to a four or five goal lead and yeah. after our quarter time, we'd fight our way back into the game and then mm. whatever. But we were constantly up against it. Against the Giants. Yeah, for sure. For four quarters. Yes. And we kept responding and there were obviously periods of time where we would go missing and I think that's just, again, it's going to happen. Like I think when we matched the Giants, when we weren't poor, I think the Giants, you're right, they played consistently good the whole day. Yeah. But we were the ones that dropped and came back and dropped and came back. When we... When we were playing well, we matched them. But when we, but it was just obviously wasn't consistent enough. So, yeah, I think you're right. They, the Giants did play pretty consistent, really good quality football. Um, our best clearly was good against them because we yeah. outscored them in the second. But our worst was the reason why we didn't win the game. Yeah. So, so look, and I think that's that's how I've sort of mm. tried to summarize it over the last couple hours since the game ended. Is our best and worst is so far apart, but yeah. I think. That is actually a good thing in the long run because it means the ceiling's high. Exactly, yeah. and I think that where from where we're at, you know, a year ago, or, you know, last where we are compared to last season, I think we want our best and worst to be far apart because sure. we want to. Imp- I think that's a sign of improvement. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and like I said, I'm not happy. I never, you never leave a game happy after you lose, but I'm. I can start to see what we're trying to do. It's and coming I together slowly. We it's can coming. See it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that. Um, the future's definitely bright. Like I said to you mm. before, it's, no, lo- it's going to be a long game. I'm the pessimistic one and I think it's bright. So if I think that, <laughs> you guys should think that too. I think it'll be worth the wait. Yeah. A couple of points we've already sort of talked about, so we'll gloss over them a little bit. But I think we I was really concerned with how soft we looked. That's my yeah. number one negative for the game. Yeah. Um, I was really disappointed with the lack of physicality we showed today from, from everyone across the board. Paul Curtis did really well in the forward line tackling pressure. And obviously we, Wardlaw around the ball was tenacious. I thought he missed a few tackles he'd usually stick um but he's always got his head over the ball other than that i think everyone was pretty poor callan dawson um you know uh, was good in the contest so they're maybe the three i'll pick out physicality wise the rest even zach fisher at times got got bullied and yep. he's small he ended up on cadman sometimes which is he's look it's not his fault he's small a weird but mismatch. yeah i was really disappointed especially with our midfield and defense's physicality yeah um when we put it together, we look good. We've already talked about that. Um, interesting at the game, pretty convinced there was more North fans there than Giants fans. Oh, my fans. God. The North turnout was amazing. Yeah. For all those who made the trip over to Sydney or who live in Sydney, um, mm. kudos to you because yeah. um, there was some noise. There was there some was noise way coming more, from North fans Yeah, today. there was. I, like, And this isn't even me just thinking like the seats are orange so there must be like, <laughs> you know, but like – 
I'm so convinced there was more North fans of that game. No, it there looked, was heaps. It, there, it looked like there was a really, really good turnout. This better be a massive turnout next week at uh, at Marvel. Then we're expecting to see all of you there. Yes. I'm sniffing a win next week. Oh. Uh, I can sniff the win, Marnie. I think if everyone gets there and if we have as much support as we can to get behind this side, and I think after today there's going to be a lot of keen North fans to get down there and see yeah. us in action. Even if we give up the amount of like transition we did last week, if we can be better in the contest, we're winning next week. You heard it here first. Wow, he's gone <laughs> early. Fremantle haven't even played yet and he's going He's going the win for <laughs> North. Uh, so watch this face, guys. Uh, yeah, hopefully well, uh, hey. hopefully that comes to fruition. You wanted me to be more positive, guys? Here you go. Okay? I love it. Don't I'm complain. S- I'm here for Delulu, Josh. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> How do you feel about Bailey Scott on kickouts? Um, look, I think overall we really struggled to get the ball out of the Giants oh, yeah. attacking 50. Um, and so... I don't know if that's the right person to be taken. I mean, it's definitely better than Aiden Cor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I agree with that. I think Aiden, I would probably rather Aiden Cor take them out. My theory on Bailey Scott is I think he's a decent kick, but he needs to be the guy. When, when he kicks the ball sort of to 60 metres out, uh, like past their 50 metre line, to be the second he needs to be in there the in the link in the chain. Yeah. Like when the ball hits the ground and Bailey Scott's not there and he's just sitting in the back pocket. There's no one to do anything. Last year, he was the one getting the ball, handballed out to you, handball, and Scott would run, handball back, and maybe transition us past their midfield. But I'm, I'm not. I don't like Bailey Scott in that defensive fifty. I think keep him out of there. You're not allowed to. But like netball Bailey, if you go in there, it's a penalty, mate. Because I'm not. I'm not about it. Well, I just think it, it, great player, but I'm, I don't like. I him think back this there. speaks to the bigger issue, though, is that we're too stagnant. Um, and I've said this for a really, really long time. But he's like the time. number one reason why we're not sometimes. Yeah, so, you know, whoever it is, whether it's him taking the kick out, whether it's she's, whether it's Core, whoever it is. Because Core's a good user by foot. Yeah. So I don't know why he doesn't. I just think that... Dawson too? I just think that we aren't giving ourselves enough options to get the ball outside of our defensive It's because we don't cleanly. have... Like, Jerry was better today... Um, and I know, like, we, we think we do think Coleman Jones had the similar sort of game. I'm a little bit higher on him than you. I still don't think he was great. But any of it, even Larky, we put him in that category. No one's taking a mark on the wing for us. Every, the Giants knew that. If they stop our transition, we've got nothing to so kick to. So then we need to we need to be agile and we need to find yeah. other avenues outside of our defensive 50. We need to chip, chip, chip and then go by hand. We do, we, did you notice today we never, like, switched the play? Which we is just always, ridiculous. Yeah, we never switch to find someone out that side and get the overlap. The Giants did that to us so much and they've always got one player over. They always have another link in the chain. When we picked a side of the ground after we kicking it out, it. that's the only side we ever go yeah, to. Yeah, and it's just, I, I don't know. Like, I think that if we're trying to have this high attacking, you know, game of football, then we need to actually give ourselves an opportunity to yeah. attack and going long down the line just isn't working. For sure. Because we don't have enough tall options that are reliable. Mm. You're so right. So, yeah, I don't know. I think it's a bigger issue than just Bailey Scott. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, it's more just about Bailey Scott and the kickouts. I would take him off them and play him higher up the ground. Sheasel, Core, Dawson seems pretty good by foot. Um, I'd rather those guys take. I spent say Sheasel. Yeah, I think Sheasel. Well, I think Sheasel did it last year. Did a really good job. Yeah, so well, he's dispo- We'll talk about Sheasel in a second, but like disposal efficiency wise, he's great. Yeah. Um, disposal efficiency. Speaking on that. We had 81% disposal efficiency. Well, we efficiency. looked pretty good by hand, which we've touched we on We did before. by hand, yes. By foot, we were pretty bad. Um, I can't believe just on the eye test, that's the percentage of efficiency. I would have thought it would be like 60, between 50 and 60%. Well, that's a big win for us then. Yeah. Um, inside 50 efficiency. This is the one. There's a couple coming up here that are bad, but this is one that, once again, with our conversion rate, if we can fix this up, even get it to 50%, we, we could have won that game today. Say we're above 50% inside 50 efficiency. We we arguably could have won or, or been within a couple of goals. Mm. 39% efficiency entering the 50 is shambolic. In comparison to the Giants who had 61%. 61%. Yeah, I mean, you saw how many times we just kicked it straight onto the chest of a Giants defender. Yeah. It's, um, and this is, um, I've spoken about it, it's an age-old issue that we've got our, you know, 
we, our disposal going into the Ford 50 is rubbish, yep. um, to be honest. Let's let's lump this one in quickly before you go on, sorry. Um, Mark's inside 50 were 25 to them and 9 to us, which yeah. is also it's horrendous. I think terrible. this is all part of the conversation, but please keep going. Lower sorry, your eyes. It like, you know, we don't have a tall forward line and putting it on the head of someone isn't going to work. Our tall forward also can't take contested we marks. Need to he's great at everything else, but he's never going to be that We player. need to use that magnetic ball, you know, and we had Petrie and we had... Brown, Brown, you know, Even we'd Jared have White. Jared Waite, we'd kick the ball 10, you know, we'd kick the ball to where we wanted them to be yeah. and they would run into space and it would hit them, you know, on the chest rather than lobbing it over their head or on their head and, you yeah. know. They but just this is the ball users, isn't it? Because in that era, every time Brent Harvey had that ball, Sean I'm Higgins. like, you're Sean Higgins, I'm like, he'll hit someone. It's yeah. cool. But then, and as much as we know they're going to be amazing, LDU and Wardlaw, they I don't trust kick. them to hit a target at all. They're great at so many other things. Uh, Wardlaw's my guy and he's going to be a star and I believe he'll fix this. LDU, we know the levels he can be, but they're, besides LDU being quite soft today, um, both of them need to learn how to hit a target because 100%. that's that's probably the biggest thing holding both of them, especially Wardlaw because I think the rest of his game is pretty complete. If Wardlaw could get LDU's amount of disposals and kick better, the dude's racking up three votes. Especially because we play a majority of our football under the roof at yep, Marvel. In perfect you conditions, know, yeah. If we, if we played a lot of games at the G or if we, you know, we were a, a non-Victorian side and we played, you know, open roof every second week, you know, the chaos ball can work because there were yeah. a few times where we got the ball into our forward 50 and we just made something out of nothing. Thing. Yeah, and we we just you know we don't have that excuse. No, like we really should be able to generate more opportunities inside four fifty. Now, you know when we actually have those opportunities, for the most part, we take them. Yeah. Sure, and we convert, and we you know we mm. convert well today. We but take our opportunities, but we don't get enough opportunities. Thirty nine percent, yeah, you know, it's not good. Conversion rate is piss poor. Hundred percent, couldn't yeah. have said it better. Um, Contested possessions, we've touched on this, but the stats back up our fears. 145 to 113 contested possessions. And this is where... This is where the softness comes in. This is where well, I thought today we weren't good enough. But also this is where you sit here and think, well, where's Will Phil? Where's Will Phil? Jai Simpkin helps that out. Getting a Cunnington type is great. That's where a Lazaro isn't going to help us. Powell isn't that player yet. I think he might have the size to become that, but yeah. we haven't seen that from him. I agree. That's where a Will Phil could help us. Am I convinced Will Phil deserved to play this game? No. But I think with Simkin out, he had to play. You know, like we said, if, you know, LDU, Sheasel, Wardlaw is our starting midfield, I think we all agree with that. Then you go the next three, Powell, Lazaro, Phillips. Powell and Lazaro, after their pre-seasons, had to play today. If any was going to be left out, it is Will Phillips, I believe. But with Simkin being out, um, he had to play. But I, I also think the inclusion of Liam Shields just threw, took everyone by surprise. Yeah, yeah, as well. I don't. Yeah, I don't understand that at all. Like you, Green Greenwood, like we know you love Green, but realistically, without the bias, like Greenwood definitely should have played over Shields and um, Will Phil as well. And don't get me wrong, I actually really, really like Liam Shields, and I loved what he brought yes. to the side last year. I actually think he was a really good contributor for us. He looked a bit tight, like. But I just don't know, given mm. given our need to develop Will Phillips, well, in my opinion, our need to develop yes. Will Phillips, um, the decision to leave him out today. No. I like, I like Shield, the thought of Shields being there for on-field leadership and experience head, especially in a young team. But I think I only want to see him in the team if we've got the injuries to justify it. Yeah, that's fair. Um, <coughs> uh, contested marks, I mean, this is another shocking one and it shows, you know, <coughs> what players we're sort of missing. 22 to 7 uh, contested marks. Yeah, it's, yeah. Sorry, guys, a big issue um, as well. And it's, yeah, something we've spoken about. And our big guys just didn't do enough. Well, Sherry was good, but, um, you know, he's but there. Even though he was good, he still wasn't presenting like that enough. Well, he's there to be a ruckman first and foremost, I guess, as well. Um, the other big guys probably didn't do enough, especially up the ground. I think that's one thing that we, you know, and you, we will touch on um, with Cal and Coleman Jones. But um, there just wasn't enough in general. Uh, let's end on a positive. We did win the tackles for the day, um, 44 to 48. So pretty close, but it's good to see we're not getting beaten in tackles. I guess when we have the ball so little compared to them, it's kind of an inevitable, but I'm glad we put, we did put a shift in. I do think once again, the stats definitely didn't back up what the eye test said to me. Yeah. Um, we can definitely be a lot more contested, better in the contested ball. So I would expect to be better at that in the future, even though good on us for, you know, 
winning the contested ball, I guess, in that in the tackle. Sorry, winning the tackles, yeah. you know, around the ground. So, yeah, there's there's a positive to end on to try and I spin it, Marnie. But yeah, and I think we needed to win the tackles today. I mean, the because we were never going to have more possession than the Giants. You know, no, what I mean? and you know they obviously poked holes through our midfield multiple times. So, um, I'm glad that at least we could try and match them where yeah, possible. For sure. Okay, so we'll chat about uh, the best, uh, who we thought were the best on the ground yeah, um, and who we wanted some more from. Yes. Um, then Sean Atley Club Champ votes, which is very exciting. Okay, um, first up, best on ground. I'm not saying he was the best, but in no particular order. Our best order. players from today. <laughs> We've talked about him. Dersma. Loved it. Yeah. Um, we don't need to say too much more. We already praised him a lot, but, you know, first game um, – the contested marks he took, the composure in front of goal. I know he missed one, but he just looks like an exciting player. And, you know, every time he was around the ball, I felt like something could happen. And I think having a dynamic player like that's very important. But he was able to capitalise on the moments he got as well. So Yeah, I think um, yeah, we, we love the game from... Um from Zane today, and hopefully, you know, if this is if this is what we're starting out with, then I'm uh, I'm very excited to see what's to come. Um, Wardlaw as well. <clears throat> now, Wardlaw's stats. Once again, let's go the opposite eye test. Wardlaw's stats suggested his game wasn't quite as good as what I thought it was while watching him. But it's a very classic Wardlaw game of doesn't rack up enough disposals, but every time he does, he does something with it. His first half yeah, is very actually good. another level. Yes, he was quite I've quiet never in the seen half. I've never seen him play the way. That Do you he think played. that? I think I've seen him play better than that. Oh, I think his game against the Swans and the Bombers last year was better. Oh, I just It's up there though. He played very well, don't uh, get me wrong. He was on another level. I mean, you could not get past him. Because he was throwing himself at everything. You want physicality, you got yeah. physicality with him. No, I agree. I think the one thing I wanted from him more last year is more disposals. Yeah. And then after that first quarter, he had like 11, 12 touches in the first. And I was yeah. like, he's on for a 30 possession game today. Yeah. And by half time, I was like, he's going to do it. Yeah. And then he faded. Yeah, so he um, faded a little bit and maybe If he ever becomes around a 30 touch a game player, I'm, I'm terrified for the opposition. Look, I think, and I think he'll get there to I be honest. Too. I, um, I think a lot of it has to do with the injuries that he's had and maybe just trying to build up his fitness and be able to sustain that over, well, a four, yeah. over a four quarter period. But God, that first half. <coughs> oh, I, I actually I, just... Oh. Yeah, it was good. Don't – you want to give me goosebumps. Man. It was special. You, you, you put <laughs> enough Wardlaw chat on this podcast, the goosebumps will be here. I'm more than happy to contribute to Wardlaw chat any day. Wardlaw is my Hugh Greenwood, you know what I mean? Yes, I do. Paul Curtis. We haven't talked much about Paul Curtis. I really liked Paul Curtis. You Curtis's left him out of your initial today. team, Marnie. Talk to me. I left him out of my best for the year. I didn't leave him out of my side I for know, this I know. I'm just I saying you're the I hate Paul Curtis girl. No. Here he goes, Wor guys. Every <laughs> week, putting words in my mouth. No, I'm more. I'm more suggesting because the number one comment you got after that episode were, "I can't believe you didn't put Paul Curtis." In. Okay. But anyway. Well, everyone makes mistakes. What can I say? Hey, look at me and Tristan, my um, best mates. <laughs> No, I, I loved his game today. Um, I thought that, you know, he obviously con contributed on the scoreboard, but I think that his general play, you know, he forward had pressure. forward pressure. He set up a lot of um, a lot of other goals and scoring opportunities Good marking as too. well. Um, I think it was quite a complete game from him. Another goal would have been nice. I think three yeah. goals probably would have been like, yeah, that was one yeah. of the – one of he was in one of our best for me, but very good game for yep. Paul Curtis. So I really enjoyed that performance. No, I completely agree. Uh, Decent uh, mark at the in the fourth quarter as well. Not fully contested, but you know there was pressure coming. And he took it while riding a bump. So, you know, I think he can play above his height with his phys physicality and strength. Um, obviously, that's where him and like a Jaden Stevenson differ. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I really like what I saw from PC. It was very very good. Callum Dawson. I was very happy with Callum Dawson today. Will you talk us through Callum Dawson? Because you've been <coughs> a little bit uh, hesitant to jump the gun on him like the rest of yes. us. Yes, and I think, you know what? That's a good way to put my opinion on him. I've never doubted him. I am hesitant. Like, I've always thought he could do it. I just never agreed that he'd showed it when people said he did. I'm really happy with Callum Dawson today. He was our best key defender. He was better than Core, much better than Pink. Um, I think he held his own. I really wish he played on um, Hogan the whole day. Yeah. Um, you know, I think Pink playing on a Cadman would have probably been better because of Cadman's lack of experience as well with Pink. I think that would have been a better matchup. Um, and I guess Riccardi and, and Core, you know, as we've talked about, Core as the third key tall just doesn't seem to work. Um, but we kind of need to have them all in there for the Giants forward line. 
Callan Dawson, some of the, like I've always said as well, I think Callan Dawson and Aiden Core are very similar players. Callan Dawson is just Josh Goda but grew bigger. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like some of the times he was, like a couple of times he broke through the midfield with like a, K, like a Kane Turner, Aiden Core overlapping handball style stuff. He broke through the middle a couple of times and – I'm like, mate, you're a key defender. Go back really good down today. there. Yeah. I just don't want to see him up there doing that though. Like, yeah. I, like if True. say we had Combin there and he was that third key defender and he's doing that fine. But then I'm thinking he's our best one-on-one defender down there. Yeah. If th- when this ball gets turned over and he's past halfway, we need what you. is going to happen? No, he was really, really good <laughs> He was today. great. He was great. Yeah. And I really hope that, you know, this is what we've been scr- – we've just wanted as the general consensus – I think from fans is we just want him to have a crack. We just want yeah. to just leave him be. Like he was good at closing there. down. Like a play, there was a couple of times where the Giants kicked into the fifty and it looked like an easy mark, yeah. and he closed it down well. He spoiled well, and he was one that wasn't afraid to put a body on. I just I was really impressed with him today. You know, yep. he's had a really good preseason and he's obviously earned his spot. And he's mm. someone that is taking the opportunity when it comes his way. And full credit to him because I thought he was really really good today. And how much pressure our defense was under? I think he held up really well. Hundred so. percent. And yeah. look, I mean, we obviously overall the defense was really, really just they were slaughtered, yeah. um, honestly. But I mean, you've <coughs> got to give him praise where it's due. And I thought that you know, given that it was what his seventh game or something, eighth game maybe career wise, not even that maybe, not it even might be sixth. Yeah, yeah, I just thought he was really good today. I was really impressed mm. with him. Uh, Cam Zerha, one hundred games up for Cam Zerha. Happy yeah. hundred games, Bull. Yeah, happy um, hundred games. Um, I think I think he. Well, it was Obviously, the second half. If he didn't go into the midfield, I actually in the first half had him in my I wanted more column. Yeah. Um, and I think I that's fair enough. That. Well, he didn't touch the ball in the second quarter. No, the first quarter he was all right. Kicked a good a classic Zerha, picks the ball up, fend off, snap around the body goal. Um, second quarter obviously needed to change something. And, yeah, he he was the reason we stayed in that game. I think yep. today, it's especially in that third quarter. Yeah, I think that's um, a that's a fair fair call. Yeah, and for not for not playing at all in the midfield, I think he he gave us exactly what we needed when we needed something in that midfield. So I, I maybe wouldn't say necessarily one of the best players on the ground, but I think he was dynamic when he needed to be, and he changed the flow of the game. I think so, and the way he was able to claw his way back into the game. Yes, yep, um, yep, when yep. he was able to have more exposure to the footy, I think was really really good. Harry Sheasel, and this was another one where Harry Sheasel is has the most casual thirty two touches you'll oh ever God, see. Oh God, he's so good. I <laughs> there was points in the game where I was like, I haven't feel like I haven't seen Sheez for a bit, and then you look, he's got thirty two touches on ninety percent disposal efficiency. He just gets the job done. This man is unstoppable. Playing in that defense, being that clean, getting that much ball. I love Harry Sheasel. It was really excited, exciting to see him go into the middle at times, though, especially yes. early on in the game. And, and that's I something really I called for in the preseason. And after, it, like, I didn't think he was fantastic in the middle during the preseason. And they threw him back to halfback pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I really want to see him get more midfield minutes. He's our cleanest user of the ball. Without a um, doubt. Without a doubt. McKercher could be that, but obviously Sheez is the guy. Um, I want to see him. I'd love to see him be. A midfielder that goes off halfback sometimes by the end of the season. Well, let's work towards that because I think it's um, it's not a waste having him. No, down no, no, because halfbacks are basically midfielders these days. But I think he was having to play. He was almost playing like back pocket sometimes. Yeah. And I don't know if I like him that far down the ground. But I guess when the ball's coming in that quick and that deep, you do you've need got the to get extra him around support. the ball. Hundred percent. And he, I mean, who who else would you rather it in their hands to get it out of the back? No, line, well, exactly. You know? He's the one. Um. Tom Powell, really happy with Tom Powell. Thought he I, played I've, really, really well. Yeah, been a little bit sceptical on Tom Powell. I've, I've always considered him a good player, but I've, I think I, I've wanted more from him. Um, I, one thing, I don't think it was like a breakout Tom Powell game, but I think he was a really consistent, solid midfielder for us today. Six clearances, 26 touches. Uh, as far as I can remember, used the ball pretty efficiently and pretty well. He just looks athletic and he's a bigger body. I'd, I'd like him to throw his weight around a little bit more and put on a bit more size, I guess. But a really clean performance and one of our better midfielders and has earned his spot next week. Yeah, really played his role well. Yeah. Um, and I was really, I was really, really happy to. He was definitely one of the best as well today. Um, I was really happy with his game and I think that he's definitely earned another spot for next week. Okay, here we go. Guys, this has taken us a lot. <laughs> to Here we go. To 
go. We're going out with a bang for our last best <laughs> player on the ground. I want you to talk about Helmet Jerry. It's a phenomenon. It is. It's a phenomenon. I just think it's so. <laughs> It's 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 really good to see. Look, all banter aside, I gave Tristan Jerry an absolute pasting last year, and rightly so. But I think one thing we've always said, and we always come back to this, is we want nothing more yes. than to be proven wrong. Because at the end of the day, if we have a negative opinion on a player and they prove us wrong, then I'm that's only a good thing for the it's club. Only a good thing for North. And he was really, really good today. The Not biggest thing for me, marking. Yeah. Contested marks. Well, there wasn't took heaps five of them. Marks. Yeah, there was a couple of contested marks in there. Five marks. We, if he could ever be that player that we dump the ball to out on the wing off half back, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm almost sold. I think he needs to do this consistently, um, and I want to see this for the first couple of months of the season. Absolutely, because what he's shown in previous seasons isn't enough at all. But preseason really excited me. This game was fantastic by him. And if he can get better from here, I'm going to I'm gonna turn on Tristan Jerry. What I liked about his game today is what he did away from the ruck. And this is something that I've spoken about, yeah, Todd yeah, Goldstein, yeah, a, point, yeah. um, a lot over the years is what made Goldie such a good ruckman is his way to influence the game as a whole and not just in the ruck contest. Sherry had 19 touches. He had nine tackles. He had a f- you know he took five he marks. He had about eight clearances as well. Yeah, he, he kicked a goal. That was a very complete game. From Tristan yeah. Cherry. Now, look, I'm not saying I've seen Ruck. Yes. Obviously, I've seen better games from a Ruck very before. solid. That's that's like but the that's bar. That's a really that's a really good that's a really good game. That's the game I wanted want to be his standard, though. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's a good game for Tristan Jerry because of maybe what we've seen. That's what I want from him every week. We're not going to get that every week. No, but like then ne- you need to be around that mark. But I think by the end of the season, and if this is just taking his performance today and just projecting that it goes, you know, in an upwards trend for the yeah. rest of the year, I think we'll be sitting in a really really good spot with him by the well, end of the year. With the midfield talent as well, we need someone who's going to do that. The other the other knock I'll have on him is he won a lot of hitouts. Hitouts to advantage, I still think is a bit suspect, but hopefully as he gets more confident in the ruck, hopefully he can um, he can start improving that because I don't think he fed the, the 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 midfield a lot even though the stats suggest we won a lot of clearances. I don't think they were directly from Jerry Taps, but I'm backing him with what he's shown me so far to get better at that. Yeah, I think he was. Um, I don't think that's an unfair criticism. Do you? No, do you agree? I, I don't. I don't think so no. um, at all. And look, I mean, it was the first game back, and he's got things to work on. But I think as a starting point, this is a really, really promising start. Mm. Let's talk about some players we wanted more from. Now, not necessarily because we thought they were bad. Some of them were. But there can be some players who played well in here that we wanted more from. And the first one, which we'll skip over a little bit because we've talked about him a lot, is LDU. Yeah. 29 touches, 8 clearances, 5 inside 50s. Phenomenal stats. Yeah. Very, very good stats. And he played... On paper, played very, very well. It's the, the the defensive side of the game and the physical side of the game when I, when I was really let down with today. And I think that's what swayed my opinion. Um, I just wanted more. I don't think he was bad, but for those elements of the game we've talked about, we, wa- we I wanted more and we should expect more. No, look, I think he played a really, really good game and I think by the end of the game, he probably was in our top players, but... Again, it's coming back to what it's we It's the eye on. test, though, because if you look at this game on paper, you go LDU standard. But if you watch the game, that the stats don't show some of the lack of contested stuff he did. Well, it's just you want more. I mean, yeah. it's not to say that – again, he's not saying he played a bad game. We've no. spoken about this already, but yeah. I just think knowing the talent that he's got and knowing Correct. what he could be – yeah. To what he, you know, delivered today, I think that, you know, we probably can expect a little bit more from him. And I think that if we do get more from him, then everyone around him will lift and then maybe we'll be a bit closer to the wins. Um, mm. But, yeah, I mean, look, it's a, it's a hard one because on paper, obviously, it, that's an excellent game and you'd be stoked yeah, 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 something I agree. like that. Yeah. And then the nice things that he did do were very, very nice. So, Correct. But, look, we've touched on him and, you know, I'm hoping that he can I get I back out. him to come out next week and, and – Hopefully get him into first gear next week. Yeah. And I expect three votes LDU against Fremantle next Luke, week. Luke, if you're listening. You heard me, Luke, please. <laughs> um, Dylan Stevens, we haven't spoken about him at all and almost for a good reason because he didn't do too much. Yeah, a bit underwhelming. Very underwhelming. I really like Dylan Stevens. He was brilliant in the preseason. I backed this guy to be great for us and he's my guy. I'm sticking with him. 
Um, just underwhelming. 14 touches, probably not enough. Um, and just little impact. Little impact, yeah. He was a he was a link in a chain a couple of times, but I don't think he didn't break the game. It was a couple of times he went on a run, but he didn't do much to impact the game. He was kind of just there and uh, he's capable of more. And I'm excited for him. I'm not off Steve-O, but uh, I wanted more. Yeah, I, I did too. I think um, the promise and what we, again, what we know he can bring compared to what he brought today. Um, but I'm hoping that that is just him trying to find his groove within this side. Yep. And hopefully within the next few weeks, we can really see him start Nowhere to Nowhere near a droppable performance at all. And we don't really have the options, I guess, as well. But yeah, plays next week, absolutely. He plays every game probably of the season, unless he's bad. But like, yeah, I know he's the capable of better. I think he will be better. Just didn't impact the yeah, game no. enough. Not not uh, what we expected today. We differ on this opinion a little bit. Um, I may be a little bit too harsh because it's his first game, but Toby Pink I thought was probably my oh, – yeah, probably the last on the ground for me. Like I, I don't want to say he's the worst on the ground. No, because that was CCJ. I don't disagree with that. Uh, we, I don't know if we – do we want to argue about this a little bit for the fans or do we not? <sighs> I don't think CCJ had a good game and I'm off the CCJ train. But I don't think CCJ did anything negative when he was around the ball. Does he need to get in the contest more? Yes. Does he need to? He barely to went near the ball to do anything negative. Well, the ball barely went in the forward line. You know well, what I mean? Well, then present more up the ground. He took one contested mark and you're hanging on to that as if it was it, like it the best like thing he ever did. But it feels like it's a system thing. No, no, no. Because there was times his, his um, contest in the forward line led to a couple of goals where if he wasn't in that contest, I guarantee it's a Taylor intercept mark. And is that good enough? I'm not saying it is. But I don't think he was the worst player on the ground and I don't think he was anywhere near the best by far. Maybe could have been second worst. But him... Competing in the forward line, which nobody else did, not even Larky and Paul Curtis did when it came to like a ball kicked in long. He was the best at competing in the air and bringing it to ground, which led to a couple of goals, which usually other times in the game were turnovers. So I'm not saying he was good. I'm just saying I don't think he was as bad as people are going to scapegoat him for because he's the consensus. He's rubbish. And I know I've been in the past a Coleman Jones guy. His preseason was woeful and I think he was lucky to be selected. But that game today was better than any preseason game he's played. He needs to be better. Far out. Well, if that's better than any I'm preseason, not, but I'm agreeing with you with so this. low then. I know, but I'm, not, but I'm not disagreeing with you with this. But you understand what I'm saying where he had little impact, but the times he did have an impact, it wasn't negative on the team like I think it was a lot in the back half of last season. So I think Toby Pink got absolutely bodied today and looked like a child out there he's 25 he's 200 centimeters or 196 or whatever he is is his first game and i don't want to be that critical on him because i hope he grows and i hope he gets much better but when we won't agree but toby pink was not as good as coleman jones today coleman jones lacked involvement in the game 100 percent. but i don't know when he was there which is nowhere near enough i don't think he was a negative on our team well I mean, you think about the way that backline was under siege when that ball was. And I don't disagree in. with that, but but Toby Pink did more negative for the team than Common Jones Look, did. Look, I don't so. I don't think you can compare their games. And I in know, terms of I negative know. and positive. Maybe, maybe not. I, th- I don't think that's a fair comparison. When you talk about each game, each of their games individually, do I think that Pink got bullied? Yeah, he probably did get bullied. I think the Giants forward line was relentless and I think our entire back line was under siege. And unfortunately, him, he was probably the biggest victim to it. Do I think he helped himself? Probably in some cases he didn't help himself and he just, you know, was caught out in the wrong position at the wrong time. It's inexperience. There's, it's a whole it's a whole raft of things. Do I think that he's got the potential to be a good player? Yeah, I think he does. And I think that he showed enough positive in that game today that thinks, yeah, whether he plays next week or not, yeah, I think you know, there's potentially a future there for him. I don't think that I've watched, you know, Nick Larkey didn't touch the ball in his first game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know. I'm not writing him off by any means. I'm just going on the game today. I, but I just don't like Coleman him. Coleman Jones, if you're saying <laughs> the back half of last year, every time he went near the ball was a negative, and then in the preseason, he was dropping chest marks, I mean, he was rubbish. And then he comes out there today and say, well, he wasn't as bad as that. Well, I bloody hope he's not as bad as I'm that. I'm not disagreeing. I feel like we're missing maybe my point here, which is I'm not saying that he was great, but 
if he did what he did today and was able, which he wasn't, so but if he did what he did today and got around the ball more, I think it's a pretty solid game. I don't think he but got he around didn't. the ball. I know. It's a what if. But Toby Pink was worse than Coleman Jones because every time, at least when Coleman Jones was around the ball, he didn't get bullied out of the way and was irrelevant. Toby Pink got bullied like a child today. Coleman Jones wasn't good enough, but Coleman Jones did more positive for the team today. And it was small, but he did more positive for the team than Toby Pink did. Okay, well, maybe Coleman Jones did one or two good things. So you're yeah. saying that Pink just did not have any good anything good yes. the whole game. Basically. A couple it's of a like a couple of spoils. Call. But I that's that's what I saw today. That's a big yep, call. It is. But he did maybe the only things I remember Toby Pink doing that were okay were a couple of spoils. And that's it. That's I'm gonna it. go on a track that I didn't tell you I was gonna go on, but I'm curious on your thoughts yeah. now, watching today's game. Mm-hmm. Do you think we've mm-hmm. made a mistake moving Combin to the back line? No. No. Because Dawson is not big enough to be a key defender. Uh, Kaur's not big enough to be a key defender. Pink is big enough, but from that performance, I don't want him playing on... So what happens uh, when Logue comes back? I'm re- I have no idea. Because we've got too many... We've got not enough key position players that are good. Combin will instantly come in and be our best key defender. Kaur is not a key defender. Like, if you put Kaur... Who would you rather play on Hawkins or Taylor Walker or... Harry Mackay, you'd rather Combin because his physicality, his agility, his uh, ab- ab- ability to mark the ball. I think after Pink's performance, Combin walks into this team next week. Yeah, if and he's fit, I think he I needs think to he play. does. Yeah. But uh, uh, Griffin Logue also, I think Griffin Logue's a better one-on-one defender than all those guys. Maybe not Combin. I think he's got the physicality too. Well, Combin's un- really untried. We don't know. 100%. But, it, but on paper, he fits the mould Because better. if this... Is our best option to support Nick Larkey? We're stuffed. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. Now, I'm, I, I'm not going to sit here and go on a tangent about why Hugh Greenwood should be playing instead of Coleman Jones because everyone's sick of me talking about it, but I guarantee you there's a lot of people out there who agree with me. Yeah, and I, I think Hugh Greenwood, and like we said before, I think having Hugh Greenwood there to be able to throw forward, to be able to put in the midfield when we lacked any sort of pressure, to be able to put him in the ruck, you know, subbing Coleman Jones off like we did and began to throw him in the ruck. He's a more versatile player. Because the reality is, right, okay, Coleman, Coleman Jones, and I'm talking about today's game yeah. only, Coleman Jones pushed up the ground and took one contested mark. Mm-hmm. Coleman, uh, Coleman Jones brought the ball to ground a couple of times instead of um, Sam Taylor taking an intercept mark, whatever it resulted in, it resulted in. But well, it resulted in two goals, so I, I don't think we can completely write off his okay, fine. contest work. Because it was, did lead to two of our Okay, goals. great. So that's three good things he's done. The reality is Hugh Greenwood's kicked seven goals in the last two weeks in the VFL. The VFL playing right. – well, w- he's playing there. I mean, he's not yeah. being – you know, he's just come back from an ankle injury. Yeah, yeah. He's kicked seven goals, albeit in the VFL. I mean, at least he's kicking bloody goals somewhere. Yeah, I, d- I don't disagree if with you're, that. And he's pinching but I don't, in the But I don't necessarily think you drop one for the other because I think it's a completely but different skill But I don't think skillset. you can play both of them. Yeah, yeah. And I, I wouldn't be – if Coleman Jones goes out of the team next week, I'm not unhappy with it. You have to try Greenwood in that position. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, Marnie. <laughs> I said I wasn't going to do this. <laughs> this is what happens when we talk about Hugh Greenwood. But you have to. I don't disagree with you. Or, or I said to you, if it's not Greenwood, then Chuck Sellers in there or yeah. try Finbar. I don't care. I don't I don't think those pl- – I think that maybe not Hugh Greenwood and I think maybe maybe Sellers I think we're I don't know if Sellers has more of a uh, an upside than Coleman Jones I don't think we can say that he's never played an AFL game well then we need to start trying it I agree I don't think it's isn't isn't, yeah okay he didn't negatively impact the game today but the what he brought to the side was nowhere near enough from what I feel confident saying that if we put a Sellers or someone in they probably don't impact it either well, maybe not straight away. Yeah, and I, yeah, I understand. Uh, look, I, I'm not sure where my line on Coleman Jones is. Like I said, if he's dropped next week, I'm not unhappy. If he's in the team next week, I'm not unhappy either. But he's probably got a first few weeks of the season to prove he can do more than he did today. I think he maybe deserves another chance to do it, but it's it's not many. How we're sitting here over a year since Nick Larkey was, you know, our sole key forward. Mm. Just completely. Well, they, they didn't go out and get anyone well, either. Well, that just like, completely <laughs> blows my mind. Yeah, like how they didn't go out and recruit a forward is beyond me. Look, we're dissolving into a lot of negative here, so let's keep going through some of the players. But I think we we agree maybe more than it sounds. I just maybe think there's maybe different things to offer with different I'm players. I'm just interested to see where they go with selection next yeah, week. No, I, I, I agree. Because I just think that it's for me, it's not working. And like I said to you, I'm not sitting – and yeah, okay, people might say, oh, because Hugh Green was your favourite player or whatever. 
Hugh Greenwood or not, whoever comes in for Coleman Jones, Coleman mm. Jones isn't working for me right now. Yeah, and I think he's not working for a lot of people. And is he working for me? I'm, I'm not saying he is. But he offers something that Sellers, Greenwood, any other other player can't offer. What, height? But no, is is I don't know how to explain this a different way to make it make sense though, you know what I mean? Like no player on our list other than Coleman Jones is able to do what we need Coleman Jones to do. Can Coleman Jones do it? No. But other players who come in aren't going to be able to do it anyway because it's never been their skill set. Trying something different? Yes, that's something we need to go to. But in my opinion, we don't need something different. We just need to find a way for that to work. Is that going to with the players we got? Maybe not. Uh, but I'm as clueless as, as you or anyone of what to do. Yeah. I just I just don't think that swapping it this quickly is going to make a difference. I don't, But I don't know if I would or wouldn't swap it either. We haven't seen anything else yet this season, I including agree. the preseason. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I know. I think we've got to pull the trigger. And, I, I mean, him being subbed off today suggests to me the trigger's coming. Yeah, I also differ on that a bit. I think more tactical because – and, look, he wasn't in the game. I'm not trying to say he was at all. But – Look, anyway, this has been a tangent long enough. Darcy okay. Tucker. Um, wow, irre- talk about underwhelming. Talk about irrelevant and didn't do anything for oh, the game. It actually made me yeah. so upset. 11 touches, did it. I barely saw him. The thing is with Tucker, right, because I was watching for him. You were on Tucker Watch. I was on Tucker Watch and I think I like – thought that his game was so much better than it was because I just sat there in the game. I was like, oh, my God, go Das. Like, look at him go. Can Das. And he, d- and he did it. There was one passage of play where he just bolted out of the back line and he attacked the ball and then he hand-passed it off and then he came over for the, you know, got got the receive or whatever it was and it mm. was really nice. But in reality, he didn't really do much. No. I do love him and I do really hope that he can find that preseason form that was so talked up about. But what, can I can I say something about Tucker? His preseason form was talked about in the intra club games. Did he stand out for you at all against maybe Collingwood a little bit? The Not Saints he didn't do up. anything. Why I like him is because he's a workhorse and he's a grinder. Yeah, and but I think is he just Kane Turner but a bit better? Ooh. Like Kane I, I, Turner's the king, <laughs> man. King of the grind. <laughs> uh, yeah, nah, look. look, he was just completely underwhelming. Yeah. And I think during the game I thought he was much better than he probably was. Um, and so, yeah, whether he plays next week or not, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I do have Goda in here. I do think after you – you did convince me a little bit with the Toby Green – um, thing of the lockdown, but I think it's a very different type of game we've seen him play. Um, I do, I do still think my points maybe do stand. I think he was a bit clumsy at times. He lost his man in the defensive end, and obviously gave away a very clumsy, rubbish free kick. But um, I guess it was a new game plan and uh, trying to play that more defensive role. So I won't put him on this list. Um, obviously. He's not going to play next week anyway. Oh. But um, look, I, I, li- I like Josh Goda. I just didn't think it was great today. But you're right. It was a different role for him. And Toby Green didn't do too much. If, yeah. he, kicked, if he kicked the ones he should have, I think we'd be saying something different. But he didn't. He didn't. That's not Tucker's... Tucker didn't make him miss or anything like Goda. that. Sorry, of course. I'm looking at the word Tucker here. <laughs> Goda. Um, but yeah, look, I don't think it was a great Josh Goda game either. You know yeah, what I mean? Look, but I, I think, think defensively, he, he good, a really good role. Um, and, you know, his role today was obviously a bit different um, yeah. to, you know, try and stop Toby Green. And I think, it was, as we touched on, he did minimise Toby's um, impact on Correct. the game because he is usually one of the Giants' most powerful players. Um, but unfortunately, we won't, we won't get to see that. Um, no. Next Very week, unfortunate because I was excited to see him this year. Yeah. Okay, we're going to finish it up on Sean Atley Club Champ votes. We usually dive into the rest of the games, but it's probably been going about an hour and a half now. So no one wants to listen to us after that big uh, argument we had, No Marnie. one wants to listen to other games anyway. We're here for Strictly North Strictly North chat. Ball. North Ball only. Um, the Sean Atley Club Champ. Now, we did, once again, what a, sh- what a surprise. We disagreed on something. Shizu <laughs> <laughs> uh, has got the three votes for me. Um Just so solid and so good. Um, Three votes, Harry Sheasel. I don't think we can argue that too much. No, he's really just continued on from everything that he showed last season. Um, And he's become such an important player for us in such a short amount of time as well. So, yeah, yeah, great, great game from Harry. Is Sheasel going back to back in the Sean Adder Club champ? There's a very high chance he does. He could. I mean, early, early, off to a good start early. Where are we? Um, we've got Callan Dawson in here as well for two votes. Um, incredibly solid. Uh, the only stability down in that back line that, that's over six foot. And um, 
Yeah, I was impressed with his athletic with his athleticism, um, but he, you know he broke the game open a couple of times too. Which once again, don't go that far up the ground, Callan, because we need you we back need there. You. We need you down there. If if Chom's down there, go for it. Um, I hope Chom and Dawson. I hope like I, I kind of hope it's Chom Dawson Court next week. To be honest, but anyway, look, we'll talk about that in the preview podcast. But um, look, Callan Dawson, great game, um, best AFL game I've seen him play. Um, so yeah. Two votes for him. And the Drum one roll, vote. please. Uh, Marnie, please announce the number, not number one, but one vote. Third best on the ground. Helmet Sherry. Not Tristan Jerry. Helmet <laughs> Sherry. Sorry, not Sherry. Um, Helmet Sherry. Uh, it sounds weird to say it like that. Anyway, he was good. We've we've uh, we've given him his flowers. We don't need to go on about Jerry. He played more. really well today. He played well. Um, well done, Tristan. Uh, Honourable mention to Zane Dersma. I was fighting for Dersma to get the one. Marnie was fighting uh, for Jerry to get the one. There's literally no way you could keep Jerry out of this. So like uh, like an old married couple, we compromised and did what Marnie wanted. So um, yay, <laughs> yay. So Tristan <laughs> Jerry gets in. Um, Zane, I fought for you. Um, but I, I'm really sorry. I couldn't get Honourable you. Honourable mention Zane Dersma. Honourable mention Zane Dersma. Could probably um, throw LDU in there as well. Yeah, Wardlaw. I couldn't with the with how I felt. I will throw him in there because everyone knows Happy Marnie. All right, Marnie, that's enough. No, no, no. You've, you've had <laughs> enough with this list. You've had too much manipulation in this list. It was just me doing this list last year. Now it's us. And happy wife, happy life, as uh, they say. Jesus, jeez, that's going to spread the rumours. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, let's end on that. I think. Um, thank you for tuning in to the first main podcast and of the year. And thank you to back. everyone again who sent in their voice, the voice memos. Yeah. It sounds feels like a forever ago that we listened to that. That was a long time ago. It's very um, late at night. Um, don't forget, you know, we're going to do that every single week um, mm-hmm. on the match review. So be sure to email through your thoughts at the end of every game for the North Pod at gmail.com. Follow all the socials as well. Uh, for those who don't know who I'm on it yet, we're on YouTube now. Um, you can see Hi, our YouTube. stunning what's what is the thing people do, money? Is that it? Did I do it right? <laughs> We've done it. Oh, right. sick. <laughs> that now that is a good screenshot for any of you guys. There's your further north wallpaper for your laptop. Um, yeah, we're we're filming it now. So YouTube, Further North Podcast, Further North Podcast on Facebook as well, Instagram, Further North Pod. Uh, also on Twitter slash X and, and TikTok. TikTok. Uh, no TikTok dancing from us. Maybe I'll do one at some point. If we I'll win do the f- one. If we win the flag this year, I'll do a TikTok dance. If we just win a game, I'll do it. Damn money. You're no, in don't. It. No. Yeah, if I'm oh. doing it, you're doing it with me. <sighs> That's gross. Please follow all the socials, guys. Uh, <laughs> and comment. If you don't you're want to miss out on, on that. If you're watching on YouTube, comment down below what TikTok dance you want Josh to do this year and I'll vote <laughs> him No. Into it. I'll do it in Bay 29. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, you'll be holding the camera up after when I'll be like. Um, so there you go, guys. Yuck. There's a preview of what's to there come. There you go. Screen <laughs> record that. Um, have we got anything else to talk about? No, that's all. Oh, well, Bay 29, speaking of, is back. Yeah, it's, it's going to be coming back. So um, look, stick to North Melbourne close to a flag. They're going to give you all the updates and that sort of stuff. Um, if you don't have anyone to go to the footy with, Bay 29 is a really, really great place to go. Um Going to football games, I know for me personally, for over 20 years has been a big, big part of my life and something I really enjoy and I'd hate mm. for somebody else to miss out because they don't have anyone to go with. Well, that, that's actually, well, not to make myself sound like a complete loser, but I actually, this is the first time in my life since the podcast I've actually had friends who I go to North Melbourne games so with. So sweet. I've never had, uh, well, well, actually, well, it's a kind of a lie, but kind of not. Me, my best friend, Matt, um, he came, he, we, we lived in Tassie together. We Our annual game would be North Melbourne Hawthorne yeah. down there. Where it was one game a year we got to go to yeah. since I moved up here in 2015 um, I've had to drag people to go and see North play with me since the podcast meeting yourself Marnie of course and the close to a flag legends um, being able to go to a games with them has been great and then meeting everyone in the bay has been fantastic so I'm sure everybody who listens to this follows North Melbourne close to a flag if you don't get if on you don't go over there they'll give you all the info on Bay 29 for this season and we'll see you we'll see you in there yeah we'll see you in um, next week against Frio Joshua be in Bay 29 signing autographs so (laughs) (laughs) BYO Sharpie guys I'm not bringing my own Um, okay I think that's about it thank you very much for listening another hour and a half podcast we're going to go and air out the rest of our dirty laundry off the show and uh, we'll come back best mates uh, forever and ever and ever so we'll see you later (laughs) see you later thanks guys bye